Welcome to Bank of Sun Prairie Stadium here in Sun Prairie, the site for tonight's WIAA Division I state semifinal between Kimberly and Marquette. It's officially at Ashley Field, and I am Ricardo Arguello. Hanging out, as always, with Brett Christofferson and bringing you those high-definition shots. Jim Rosendick, we're all part of USA Today Network Wisconsin. And, Brett, I'm excited, number one, because we're in a nice, beautiful stadium and a nice, beautiful press box, nice and comfortable sitting here because we think we're going to watch a pretty good game. Uh, game between these two state semi-finalists. Ricardo, I thought you were going to say because it's heated. It is heated, <laughs> heated it's nice. Heated press box here at uh, Bank of Sun Prairie Stadium at Ashley Field. What a facility. My goodness. We'll talk about it. I've got some game notes on this. Uh, oh, please. I'll uh, be very great. A, a little bit later on in the uh, in the stream here. But, uh, yeah, here we go, right? Uh, state semifinals, two historic programs when you look at uh, high school football in the state of Wisconsin. Obviously, Kimberly, uh, what it has done in recent uh, decades, I guess you could say, since really that old, in the mid-old, oh, what is that, the aughts? Is that what they call it? The aughts? Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> and then Marquette, and, uh, you know, they won a WIA state championship, a lot of WISA state titles as well. So True. the Hilltoppers, the Paper Mix, the all-name game as well. Talk about two great nicknames. Two really good defenses going to go at it. Uh, we'll talk about what this Hilltoppers defense has done. But Kimberly battle-tested in the Fox Valley Association. So I think this is going to be one of those uh, – Heavyweight matches, a lot of jabs, and let's see uh, which team comes up with the stop, which could deliver the roundhouse blow and and uh, send them to Madison next week for the Div Division One state championship game. That's right. Camp Randall Stadium, that's the prize that one of these teams will get for coming out victorious in this state semifinal. Now, we're going to have some Kimberly and Milwaukee Marquette University notes. I will start with Kimberly. Brett will follow with Milwaukee Marquette. Again, these notes put together every week so nicely by Brett. Let's get to know Kimberly. Well, they're 10 and 1 coming into the state semifinal. They're second seeded and co champions of the Fox Valley Association. They're coming off that hard fought 14 to 7 win over conference rival Nina last Friday. That was a Division I state quarterfinal at Kimberly, also a game that we streamed. Braden Ellison's two yard touchdown run in the fourth quarter proved to be the decisive and final score of the game as it broke a 7 7 tie. Kimberly opened the scoring in the second quarter on a 29-yard pass from Ellison to Bryson Veith. Now, Ellison, Brett, he's not the starting quarterback. He comes in periodically throughout the game. A little wrinkle, right? No yeah. wrinkle here. And we'll talk about that as the game unfolds here. But, uh, yeah, he had that big pass, touchdown pass to Bryson Veith. Grant Dean from Nina, his six-yard touchdown catch later in the second quarter. That was a Rockets' lone touchdown. Carson Pendleton, the starting quarterback, threw for 50 yards on 4 of 10 passing. Overall, Papermakers threw for 79 yards and finished with 223 yards against a pretty good stout Nina defense. Gavin Tyson, he led the way in rushing with 70 yards on 13 carries. Marcus Doucette, he added 57 yards on 13 attempts. And Kimberly ran for 144 yards uh, overall. Veith, their number one receiver, posted five catches for 79 yards. And defensively, the Papers also came up with two very key interceptions. Now on the season, Pendleton, he's thrown for 1,256 yards and 17 touchdowns while completing 61% of his passes. He's also thrown eight picks. Gavin Tyson, type rush, uh, Gavin Tyson is the top rusher with 934 yards and eight touchdowns. He's averaging 4.9 yards a carry, 84.9 yards a game. And Doucette is next with 674 yards and seven scores. We talked about Beat. He's a team leader in receiving with 47 catches for 648 yards and eight touchdowns. Uh, we don't have updated defensive stats to report, but we can tell you that Ellison's 60 tackles led the way uh, heading into last week's state quarterfinal action. Brody Beck next with 51 stops. Sawyer Hanlon and Sam McGivern, they posted seven and five sacks respectively to lead the team. As a team, Kimberly's averaging 119.1 passing yards a game. They're allowing 103.7. Papermaker is on the ground while they're averaging 160.6 rushing yards. They're allowing 106.8. And overall in points, Kimberly's averaging 24.5 points a game and allowing 10.7. That's a healthy, basically, two-touchdown uh, difference in terms of points and points allowed. Winner of this game, as we know, will take on either Sussex, Hamilton, or Franklin next Friday in the WIAA Division I state title game. That's at Camp Randall Stadium in Madison. Kickoff scheduled for 4 o'clock for that one. Brett, what can you tell us about Marquette University? Marquette University, Ricardo, 10-2 and two coming into this one. You mentioned Kimberly, 10-1, and one, a pair of 10 win teams facing off here tonight. The second-seeded Hilltoppers routed Fond du Lac 42-zip last Friday. That raised some eyebrows, didn't it, Ricardo? Sure did. uh, that was a WIA Division I state quarterfinal at Hart Park in Wauwatosa. 
Quarterback Peter McDevitt threw for 128 yards and two touchdowns on 14 of 16 passing. He hooked up with Cam Russell on an eight-yard scoring connection with 640 to play in the first quarter. McDevitt's other TD toss came with just 122 to play in the second quarter when he connected with Thad Hoffman on a seven-yard score. That gave the Hilltoppers a 35-0 halftime lead, and then Ricardo was running clock uh, the second half, the entire second half. Tommy Novotny rushed for a pair of touchdowns, 27 and three yards, and finished with 100 four yards on 12 carries. McDevitt also scored in a one-yard plunge in the second quarter. Marquette's final touchdown, well, that came uh, on a 58-yard interception <laughs> return for a score by Patrick O'Brien with 8-16 remaining in the third quarter. Russell and Hoffman were the leading receivers with 59 and 52 yards respectively as the Hilltoppers finished with 258 yards overall. Russell finished with eight receptions while Hoffman was credited with four catches. Defensively, Ryan Tomlinson Murphy Monreal, I hope I'm saying that right, folks, and O'Brien, uh, who had in, uh, two interceptions actually on the night. They all tallied 10 tackles apiece. And by the way, Ricardo, that shutout, the eighth of the season for Marquette. That's incredible. Speaking of the season, McDevitt has thrown for 1,657 yards and 15 touchdowns while completing 62% of his passes. He has six interceptions. Luke Giacetti and Mason Steinhoff have also tossed TDs. Josetti has thrown for 90 yards while Steinhoff has passed for 87 yards. So is that some wrinkles maybe on the Hilltopper side? Ricardo, some different guys other yeah. than, than McDevitt that can hurt you in the passing game? We'll find out soon enough. Novotny, uh, excuse me, Novotny easily leads the way in rushing 1,309 yards and 25 touchdowns. He's averaging 7.1 yards per carry and 119 yards per game. Russell is the team's top receiver with 47 catches for 667 yards and eight touchdowns. Hoffman is next uh, with 36 receptions for 473 yards and one TD. On the defensive side, Tomlinson's 90 tackles lead the way. He also has two interceptions and a forced fumble. Nate Schramm is next with 89 tackles and two sacks. Monreal is third with 84 stops. And Mitchell Nigro has five sacks and a forced fumble. Overall, Ricardo, check this out. The Hilltoppers have 31 sacks. Oh and five interceptions on the season. Look out. Uh, as a team, Marquette is averaging 152.8 passing yards per game and allowing 87.9. The Hilltoppers are averaging 166.7 rushing yards per game and allowing 96.3. And then on the scoreboard, Marquette averaging 39.7 points per game and allowing just 7.8. I don't know for uh, Rosie if you can uh, somehow pan this. This is an, uh, this is an, a, mag a magnificent facility. It is. I mean, incredible. It, when we walked in, Rosie and I, we got here before you did, Ricardo, and we were like, "Wow!" This is better than a lot of. Uh, and no offense to our Division Three colleges, this is on par with a lot of them, maybe even better. It's. I mean, you got big press box space on on both sides. Really, we have this huge booth to ourselves, uh, heated press boxes. But I mean, I don't want to talk about us. Let's talk about the fan amenities. This place. Beautiful. Can hold 4,000, yeah. a huge video board. It's on the site of, I believe, the original Ashley Field, and they ended up building this when Sun Prairie West was built uh, recently. We'll talk again more about the particulars, but it, it, it's there's a wow factor when you walk into this place, Ricardo. It, as far as high school goes, it has to be. It's got to be right if, at the top. If it's not the, at yeah. the if it isn't the top, it's right at the top. No now doubt. listen, we've been to like Kakana, Bank of Kakana Stadium, and obviously Maker Stadium. Nina has a nice facility, obviously brand new. Fond du Lac as well. Yeah. So, no disrespect to those facilities. This is better. This place is incredible. They have like a, a two-tiered uh, seating section on both yeah, sides. Yeah, I as like well. it, and, and it's very uh, handicap friendly yeah. for those who. You know, can't sit in the regular stands. Huge concession, kind of a plaza to the right. That would be, I guess, the south side of the field. So it, uh, they've spared no expense. Let's just put it that way. We'll talk more about uh, the game, this great facility. Uh, uh, our national anthem, though, coming up first. Twilight's last gleaming Whose 
Again, thanks to everyone joining us. WIA Division One State Semifinal Showdown to the uh, premier programs, you could say, in Division One, right, Ricardo? Uh, Kimberly, of course, the defending Division One State champs, and Marquette University, the Hilltoppers. I'm Breck Christofferson with USA Today Network Wisconsin and the Post Crescent. Ricardo Arguello is here as well, and the other member of our stream team, Jim Rosendick. We call him Rosie. He's over there by the heater making sure he's nice <laughs> and warm. Hey, uh, this... Uh, game is, uh, I guess, officially hosted by Sun Prairie West High School, okay. and I want to thank uh, Eric Nee, the athletic director oh, at yeah. Sun Prairie West. Uh, tremendous guy, tremendous uh, staff. Uh, super friendly coming in, uh, very accommodating. The IT uh, staff as well, so thank you so very much for uh, welcoming us with open arms, as, as everybody else has done throughout the course of the season. This is our last varsity football game of the week. Uh, we're going to shift gears here now, Ricardo, and start thinking about basketball here in the not-too-distant future. Listen, but one more football game to go. And I'm telling you, I hope every state semifinal is here. Yeah. I, uh, I, I'm already in love with this. It's love at first sight, Brett, uh, when it comes to this stadium. I'm uh, really impressed. And I'm hoping that, look, and, and I understand there's money involved here. You're talking about a model for other schools? I mean, if they got the money, you may want you, – you, I'm just saying, Kimberly, I don't know if you guys want to build a new stadium. I'm just saying this is a great, <laughs> great blueprint. High school, but enough, high, enough. High school's come a long way, yeah, hasn't they have it? come a long way. From the uh, old uh, cow pastures with those <laughs> little old archaic scoreboards. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I want to thank our uh, season sponsors, Cellcom, ETS Performance, and Cooney's Embroidery and Sportswear. Black Friday sales this month at Cellcom, now through November 20th. Join today and save up to $600 on phones from top brands. Visit Cellcom.com slash deals for details. ETS Performance is the leading provider of sports performance training for athletes across the Midwest and Northeast Wisconsin. ETS provides the customized approach to strength, speed, and injury prevention training for athletes of all sports ages, eight and up. Train like the pros and take your performance to the next level. Visit ETSPerformance.com to schedule your free athlete evaluation today at the ETS location nearest you. Appleton and the Green Bay area have uh, facilities. And Cooney's, get your team, club, or business name out there with Cooney's Embroidery and Sportswear. They, have, they customize products to, uh, specifically to fit their customers' needs Delivery services available. Contact them today, 920-7310-922, or send them an email at Cooney's, C-O-O-N-E-Y-S-0922 at sbcglobal.net. Marquette will receive Brett as we have the opening kickoff of tonight's WIA Division I State semifinal. Taken at the five. And corralled right away just past the 15. For Marquette, Brett, I think that was number 19. Is it Driscoll? Oh, I, I'm sorry. It was M Murphy Monreal. Monreal, yeah. Murphy Monreal with the return to start this game. And a good job by that Kimberly coverage unit, Ricardo, for uh, dropping Monreal before he even got to the 20-yard line. Looks like first and 10. Ball will be at the 17 or 16 yard line. 17 yard 17 line. yard line. Here we go. First play of the game. Offensive play of the game. Hilltoppers with the ball. And McDevitt looking to his left. Oh, he's indeed. Gonna, he's going downfield right away. And almost a catch. Yep, that was number four, Brett Russell. Yeah, but number 12, Benny Kiefer, the junior defensive back on coverage. So. How about Peter McDevitt, uh, one of your captains? They're taking a shot play uh, right out of the chute. We knew this would happen, Brett. They have capable receivers. They have uh, a very experienced quarterback. 
Kimberly's uh, secondary is going to have to be ready. Three receivers near side for the Hilltoppers. Nice sticky coverage though by uh, Kiefer there is number seven for, that's Tommy Novotny. So a chance right away for the Papermakers defense to uh, get that three and out. And quickly, look at how uh, I like this tempo, Ricardo, for the Hilltoppers. They're not wasting any time. No. Plays in, and they're already back to the line of scrimmage. Third down and five to go. As McDevitt, he's going to roll to his left. He's going to look for the first down, and I don't. Well, it's a Hanlon was there. It's close, but it's gonna, no. no. He's going to be a couple yards shy. So Nick McDevitt trying to get out in space, saw some space, but that Kimberly defense swarming to the football, and I thought number 90, Ricardo, Sawyer Hamlin, or Hanlon, uh, the 6'1", 235-pound junior defensive lineman getting in there fast. And you can see in kind of the speed and athleticism of that uh, Kimberly front forcing the three and out now. Yeah, fourth and two situation here for Marquette. Looks like they'll be punting. Right, but nice uh, play by uh, the defensive line, right, of Absolutely. Kimberly. They're going to be critical in this and applying pressure and getting penetration along the trenches. Eric Schmidt, the punter. Bryson Veith uh, back to receive. At least he's the deep man for the papermakers. Good snap. High punt. And I think Fair catches the call by Veith. And uh, <laughs> those are always an adventure. Yes, they are. And uh, good field position for the papermakers. So the defense did its job. But now we're going to get a crack and we're going to get a glimpse of that great Hilltoppers defense. Again, eight shutouts on the season. So who knows, Ricardo, we might be in for one of those, like I said, a, a nice defensive uh, slobber knocker, right? Back and forth, kind of like we saw last week when we streamed the state quarterfinal between Kimberly and Nina. That was a 14-7 ball game. Kimberly's offense has been really playing much better throughout the postseason. They've been progressing nicely. Big challenge for them tonight, though. Pendleton, he's going to drop back, throw right away. Nice hands catch by Beef. Tough catch, and uh, he comes up with it. Hey, uh, Kimberly leads the all-time series 3-zip. Did you know that, Ricardo? I did not. All three previous meetings have come in the playoffs. This is the third time the two teams will meet in the state semifinals. They met in the state semifinals back-to-back -back years, 2014 and mm. 2015. Those games are played at uh, J.J. Keller Field at Titan Stadium in Oshkosh. 48-16, Kimberly 2014, and 49-20, Kimberly in 2015. They also played in 2017 in the playoffs. Hand off to Tyson, and he's got the first down based on where the uh, sideline official is marking that ball. Takes it to the 49. He should have that, and he does. Yeah, 49-33. That was a second-round game at Kimberly back in 2017. So 3-0 the lead in that game. Uh, Kimberly won, as I said, 49-33. That was a second-round playoff game. How about some, some blasts from the past? DJ Stewart. Oh, wow, yes. He ran for 263 yards and three touchdowns to lead the way for Kimberly. Quarterback Alec Rosner, 288 yards and two scores. How about Zach Lechner? Seven catches, 158 yards and a touchdown. What a high-powered offense that was. Yeah, they had some... Uh, some guys that could hurt you all over the field. There's a pass to, a swing pass to Doucette. And uh, about four or five yards. Overall in that game in 2017, Ricardo, Papermaker 625 yards. Is that good? 337 of those on the ground. I think that's pretty good. As for Marquette, here's some uh, blast from the pass as well. Daniel Carter ran for 132 yards and three touchdowns. Quarterback Josh Horning, 294 yards and a TD. Jimmy Ubert three receptions for 100, 131 yards. So, Yeah, they had quite the offense as well, Brett. Some good playoff history between these two teams. Fourth time they'll meet. Handoff, Doucette. Look, no, nowhere to go. Nowhere to try to drag a defender or two, but uh, too good is that Hilltoppers defense. Third down coming up. By the way, uh, Pendleton, uh, two for two for 12 yards right away through the passing game, Brett. Nice Quick, short passes. Might be the way, if you yeah. remember how you're going to have to win this game, right? You're going to have to uh, do some stuff in the air because I think that Hilltoppers' defense is going to be very difficult to run against. Third down and five. Two receivers near side. And you look at that, that defensive front, uh, some, some big guys there, number 97 in particular. And uh, this is, is this L? No, this is Pendleton going down. Field, nice catch and throw. Beat against the Kimberly sideline. Pretty good coverage there, too. But Ricardo Veith ran a very nice route, got in front of the defender, and uh, Pendleton delivered a nice strike to Veith. First down, ball to 35. Gain of 11 yards, I believe. Was that uh, Lee on the coverage there, Brett? Mal Mal Malik Lee? 
But that's going to be an interesting matchup to watch if those two are paired together in terms of Veith and Lee. So you're trying to get that, uh, if you're Chad Michael, what's head coach of Kimberly, trying to get that uh, passing game going, right, and trying to get that rhythm going between Pendleton and Veith. So far, so good. Hand off, Tyson. Uh, he's got a little bit of a seam. Boy, they close up quickly, though. Both teams, uh, they have common opponents. Oh, they do? Bayport and Fond du Lac. They've okay. all, both played. And Kimberly beat Bayport 17-14 and then had a rally to beat Fond du Lac 22-21. Meanwhile, Marquette toppled Bayport 42-15 and Fond du Lac 42-zip in the previous two weeks. Different stages of the season, different parts of the season, Ricardo, but still, when you're looking at common opponents, pretty impressive what the Hilltoppers have done. Second and eight officially for Kimberly. Pendleton again looking to his right. Rainbows it downfield. It's going to be too far. Looked like he was looking for... Is that Brennan Grams? I believe it was. Brett, I, I uh, think... He's, he's been out for... Uh, I think he's, he's been battling an injury, so good to see Grams back in. Yeah, an, an interesting uh, decision to go deep on there. Brett, I'm, I'm going to assume that this is four-down oh, territory no doubt for about Kimberly. So no doubt about it. Yeah, and, you know, take a shot deep. you got uh, a couple cracks here to get the first down, cover eight yards. First incompletion of the night, I believe, for Carson Pendleton. He's done a nice job. First team all FVA quarterback for the Papermakers. Third down, and he now he's going to look left, and he's going to find Veith just too high, head, but yeah. he had him. Certainly did. He had him, and now fourth down coming up. That's too bad, Brett, because uh, the Hilltoppers are playing off the receivers just a little bit. Had a, a lane there for Pendleton to throw to just over through Veith. Fourth and eight. Ball at the, what, 33? Scoreboard says ball in the 38. That's not right. That's right. It's the 34. I believe it's right shy of the 34. Yeah, yeah, kind of in between 33 and 34 yard line. Here you go. What's the play call going to be? Is the papermakers a little bit of a closed, a little bit of a closed formation here, Brett, for them. Pendleton waiting for the snap. Coronado sliding to his right. Pendleton, he's got time, and there's Big Abe Coronado, Whoa. and he's got. Does he have it? I don't think so. No, Just the, the Hilltoppers, yeah, by a yard. I thought maybe Coronado had just enough, but no, he's going to be stopped by a yard. You can see how the uh, the uh, Hilltoppers defense celebrating, and uh, they get the turnover on down, so both defenses holding in the first offensive possessions of this ball game. Brett, well, they needed eight yards. They got seven. Mm. But I thought that was a nice job by Coronado to get as much as he could. Just fell short of the first down. Yeah, and a kid that you don't necessarily see in the passing game. He's such a great blocker and extension of that offensive line, a tight end. But uh, he's a guy that can hurt you. And uh, maybe something for Chad Michael to put in his back pocket later in the game. Here you go. Peter McDevitt waiting for the snap. First and ten for the Hilltoppers. He claps his hands, and Novotny has it. Trying to get around. And Oberman there. And I think that's also Brody Beck, number seven, getting in. Not much running room for Novotny. Both of these defenses right now, Ricardo, flexing their muscles here in the opening quarter of this game. Yeah, Novotny, I've hit him down for two carries for seven yards. Kimberly, uh, you know, there was a little bit of a rail there for Novotny to go through, but the Kimberly defense just too quick to the perimeter, Brett, and they closed that up real quick. Yeah, setting that edge fast. He wanted to bounce it outside, and uh, nothing doing, says that Kimberly defense. Second down is uh, McDevitt. Looking forward to seeing this kid play. Yes. He claps his hands. There's a handoff to Novotny again. Look at that. Sam McGivern, number 99, busting through into the backfield. That's going to be a loss back to the original line of scrimmage, third and ten coming up. Well, that's one thing we know about McGivern, Brett. He can, he can penetrate, and he did a great job there of blowing past the offensive lineman, pulling down the running back for a loss. Third down, and... Nine, we'll say. A long nine. McDevitt, he's got plenty of time. Zips one over. Picked intercepted. Off. Intercepted. That's number 20 for the papermakers. Mikey Wilds, the junior defensive back. And there's your first turnover. Boy, McDevitt had a lot of time, Ricardo. He did. Just, a, just a kind of a wayward throw. And Wilds was there with the, kind of a diving grab and a great field position now for the papermakers. And Brett, that he ha I, I believe he had his man open. Yeah. But the pass was just wayward. So ball Good play by Mikey Wilds, though. Ball. First off, sometimes, sometimes those easy picks, it was kind of right to him. They're the most difficult ones to make. 
So great field position ball at the 43-yard line for the Papermakers and uh, see what they can do with it as Pendleton now. Veith in motion, and he's going to get a little push pass to Veith, looking for some blockers, cuts it inside, and picks up about four yards, maybe five. Yeah, we'll say four-yard gain to the 39. That counts as a, as a reception, Brett. That's what we're saying, right? A little yeah. push pass. And in that case, uh, Pendleton's five for seven thus far for 44 yards. But let's see what Kimberly can do here, Brett. You know, they've been... Uh, traditionally a team that has made you pay if you make mistakes and uh, this is uh, a big mistake and it's in uh, Marquette territory second down and six from the 39 for Kimberly Tyson off the right side nowhere oh, to nice go nice job oh. bounces it away he and did. escapes a tackle Brett I thought he was I, th I thought he was gonna be taken right down by the line of scrimmage I did too but he, he did a great job keeping those legs moving keep those knees just churning bounces it kind of off of the guy in front of him finds uh, some space and gets the first down. Six-yard carry, four carries for 11 yards thus far for Gavin Tyson. Again, the leading rusher for Kimberly. Both him and Doucette, they have modest uh, rushing numbers, Brett, but... They're a good combo, though. They're, they're a very good combo. This time, Veith, uh, they fake the push pass, and Doucette looks like he's uh, got a little bit more spring to his step. Remember, he's kind of battling that... Uh, Ankle injury, was that against Spash, I want to say, in the second round? Mm. And uh, played through it, played uh, again last week, and looks like he's got a little bit more uh, pep to his step here in this state. Yeah, and I remember, I remember just chatting with him a little bit, and he just said, hey, that's just been a lingering thing for him. And uh, he's been playing with that for a while, so. Well, he's not going to miss this game. No. Second and six, balls at the 29 of Marquette. Pendleton handoff, and ooh, good block. By nice spin move. Still on his feet. <laughs> I didn't see who got the block, but there was a defender coming in the backside really fast and looked like he had a bead on uh, Doucette, but uh, somebody came in last second for the Papermakers. Really had a nice block there. And uh, now third and very manageable. So again, four down territory here at this part of the field. Maybe. Yeah, do you, do you bring in a Hunter br Berry is uh, for a field goal? Or what about Elfson? I haven't seen, we have yet to see him. Right, at quarterback, coming in at quarterback. Well, Pendleton still out there in this third down. Gavin Tyson behind him, and Tyson's got it. Oh, oh wow. Oh. How about big 95 for the Hilltoppers? That's Tate Kowalik, huh? The senior defensive lineman just coming in and blowing that play up. Fourth down. Yeah, loss of one, Brad Bull. Tyson had no chance on no, that one. Not at all. Well, what do we say? It's going to be a defensive struggle between these two teams. Five carries, ten yards for Gavin Tyson. Yeah, here you go. Fourth down and five at the 28. Let's see what the play call is here. Is Pendleton now? He's going to roll to his right, looking downfield. And, oh, got he's just got it. And he did. Who caught that? That's was it Veith? Veith again. Ricardo, there was nothing there yeah. as, as Pendleton was rolling to the sideline. Credit Pendleton, though, not panicking. And he was as patient for as long as he could be patient until Veith somehow flashed open at the last second. First down ball at the 22. And Brett, you know, he was running out of real estate. Oh, there was nothing there. <laughs> you know, first down and 10 at the 22, nearing the three-minute mark of the first quarter. No score between Marquette and Kimberly, but the papermakers are driving. Doucette now with it, trying to spin around. Those run, running yards both ways are going to be tough, right? Those are going to be grind out yards tonight in the running game, but you got to stick with that run game as well, right? You, you just can't all of a sudden bail and, and just start slinging it around the field. I think the papermakers have been successful enough. Offensive line doing some pretty good work, but boy, that is a stout Hilltoppers defense. It gets eight shutouts on the season for Marquette in that greater Metro Conference. Sussex-Hamilton also part of that league, and uh, Hamilton playing Franklin tonight. Uh, we should keep a track of, of we that. We will. I'll check those out. Because uh, the winner of that one plays the winner of this one, of course. Pendleton's got time. Looking downfield for Grams, and almost. Whoa. I think number five for the Hilltoppers, Nick Womack, uh, senior defensive back, knocked it up, and when it was in the air, I thought that could be an interception, but he knocked it away from the defender, number 21, Murphy Monreal. 
So third down, you got to be careful if you're Kimberly, right? Uh, you're in field goal range. Careful with the football here, third and eight at the 20. I think you're in field goal range, Ricardo. We'll see. Coronado sliding to his right. He's going to nope, play fake to Tyson. And now look, he's got Pen room. Pendleton, he's going to try to come. Whoa, big time tackle. Fumbles. Uh-oh. And Hilltoppers got it. Number 95, I believe, Brett. Yep, didn't see who caused it. And uh, it was a pretty good lick on Pendleton. And there's another turnover. Both teams now with turnovers apiece. Defense is holding firm again. Wow. Unfortunate news out of uh, oh boy for Kokana Brett in that at, at from Ripon. We want to update folks on that. No, go ahead. No, you can. I'm I'm trying to get where this was at the 18. <laughs> oh, I can. I can. Hold on a minute. I'm sorry. Uh, this is from Mike Sherry, who's covering that uh, Kokana game. Doriel sacked and injures right leg, carried off the field, not putting any weight mm. on it. Finley Doriel, the quarterback, offensive player of the year in the FEA, and Novotny nowhere to run for the Hilltoppers. That's too bad. That is. Uh, they have a tough enough game playing against Wanakee that you lose your starting quarterback. Mm. Game is at Ingalls Field in Ripon. Not too far, not too far from here. Ripon's not that far of a trip. No. Second down and nine from the 19 for Marquette. Oh, a nice pitch and catch There's there. That the was speed. a fastball. Wow. I guess. That was some blazing fast speed. Peyton Roby Brown listed as a junior running back, but that was a dart by McDevitt in the first big offensive play of the game for the Hilltoppers. Takes that all the way out to the 42, Brett. I thought maybe he was going to break that one down the sideline the way uh, he turned on the Jets. 23-yard gain. First down and 10 at the 42 for Marquette. Novotny, handoff, and boy, there's nothing there. Still on his feet, though. Trying to grind out a yard or two. Kimberly's defense has allowed uh, 14 points or less in nine of its 11 games this season. The most the papermakers have given up in a single game. That was 21 points to Fondi. 22-21 week four victory. Down in seven. Novotny again grinding some yards. And uh, by the way, kind of referenced it, but both uh, of these conferences, the Fox Valley Association, right? Kimberly co-champs. Yes. And uh, Marquette University, part of the Greater Metro, both have two teams going here in the state semifinals tonight. Kimberly and Kakana. And of course, Marquette and Hamilton, Sussex Hamilton. So very good runs for these uh, two conferences. McDevitt, he's gonna keep it, trying to get the first down. He'll be yeah, well, I think he's well, short. Yeah, Well, let's see. I think he's going to be just a hair shy. No, they're going to give him the first down. Wow. Okay. That looks short from where they placed it, wow. though. Wow. I, You can hear the Kimberly fans not happy. I don't know if with the spot or maybe just assuming that they got the first down, but first and 10, good run by McDevitt. Good-looking quarterback. He's listed at 6'1", 192 pounds. Big, strong quarterback uh, showing off the fact that he can uh, run a little bit as well. Claps his hands. He's back again. Watch out. McGivern on the run. And, boy, McDevitt, a spin move, and finally gets wrestled down to end whoop, the first quarter. Yeah. We lose some lights here? Uh, I think next door. Yes. So McDevitt uh, somehow, Ricardo, uh, McGivern was uh, was on his uh, heels pretty pretty good, but a nice block by one of the Hilltoppers, I think, offensive linemen. And uh, about a four-yard gain, I want to say, for McDevitt uh, as we close out the first quarter. We look at our CELCOM ETS performance scoreboard scoreless here through one in this WIAA Division I state semifinal game. Going to update my Twitter account. You can follow me at Ricardo DeLeon, D-E-L-I-A-N. Follow Brett at PC Brett Rosie at Metal Rosie. So Bank of Sun Prairie Stadium at Ashley Field, it's a 4,000-seat multi-purpose facility. Okay, It hosted its first event in the fall of 2020, 
Now this is the first time it's serving as the host neutral site of a WIAA state football semifinal. Here's a little history for you, Ricardo. It sits on land donated in 1953 by Sun Prairie alumnus Charles Ashley. Okay. In the May of 2020, the Sun Prairie School District partnered with the Bank of Sun Prairie on a 20-year naming rights agreement. Second quarter underway as the team switch sides. Novotny looking for some space. He's got it. And he's got, well, he'll be maybe a little short. And uh, that Hilltoppers offense now moving the ball. Bring a third and one, five-yard gain for Novotny. Quickly back to the line of scrimmage are the Hilltoppers. He has seven carries for 18 yards, does Novotny. Novotny, or I should say, uh, fake reverse. McDevitt and wide open. Nice little play call there. Is that 88? Yes. Jude Ballinger, the senior junior tight end. 12 yard gain. Or Ballinger, I should say. But anyway, uh, this was a downtown field shared by both Sun Prairie East and Sun Prairie West High Schools. Trying to get the sweep going. And, oh, there's going to be a flag, too. Yep, that's holding. coming back. And that's, that's going to negate a big gain, Brett. I think that's that Roby that's Brown again. Yeah, trying to get uh, the junior running back in space using his speed. But the uh, holding call, I'm sure, will bring that one back. But, yeah, shared by the two schools. Ricardo, when the district moved ahead to build the brand-new Sun Prairie West High School, it decided then that the two schools should share the existing Ashley Field. So that led to the reconstruction and renovation of what we now see today. And the, as it was a project that flipped the uh, configuration from an east-west direction to the current north-south layout. There's some history. I love it. Thank you. Wanakee up over Kakana, 7-zip. Hopefully uh, folks can start uh, funneling us some Sussex-Hamilton-Franklin scores as well. First down after that holding call for the Hilltoppers First behind and the 18. sticks. And Novotny looking for some running room. Looks like number six, uh, Braden Ellefson there. McGivern going to be credited with the tackle. Second down and a long way to go. Second and 15 officially. Papermakers and Hilltoppers, Ricardo, those are two great names. Gotta love those Hilltoppers helmets too, huh? I do, I love them. Nice unique look. Yeah. The Rams and uh, De McDevitt going downfield and it caught! Wow! 32 yard touchdown pass to Thad Hoffman. Brett, that was right over Wiles' outstretched hands. Just a great pass, great catch, great play by Marquette. Mm. What a what a throw indeed. Wow. Well, this is what we're talking about, Marquette. Brett, they're, they can really attack through the air. They have great receivers, good quarterback. And uh, now you've seen those two things really come through and account for a touchdown for the Hilltoppers. Boy, what a throw right on a target and a nice catch uh, in the middle of the end zone. PAT coming. And it's good. Number 18 with the kick, Eric Schmidt. And with 10.22 to go here in the second quarter, the Hilltoppers, they strike first. 32-yard connection between McDevitt to Hoffman as we look at our CELCOM ETS performance scoreboard. Marquette leads 7 to nothing. Bad Hoffman, 6'2", 188-pound senior receiver. That uh, was off the uh, Kimberly fumble, so turning a turnover into points. Looked like the papermakers were closing in at the very least a field goal. And instead, now the Hilltoppers with a 7-0 lead. And now the papermakers, Ricardo, uh, not the steepest hill to climb by any stretch of the imagination until you start thinking about all of those shutouts that this Hilltoppers defense has put together, including a 42-0 uh, route shellacking of Fond du Lac last week. We thought pretty highly of that Fond du Lac team. They had been playing well of late, in. no doubt about it. Bryson Veith and Marcus Doucette back to receive this kick. Boy, nice deep kick, and that'll be in the end zone. Uh, touchback 
coming for the papermakers. Marquette, a playoff participant every season since 2013. In fact, the Hilltoppers have only missed the playoffs once since joining the WIA in 2000. <laughs> That's an incredible run, huh? That was the 2012 season. And Kimberly, a playoff participant in every season since 06. We're not counting the uh, spring alternate, whatever no. they call that, back in 2021. Even oh. though Fond du Lac had a <laughs> once every 50 years kind of a team, though, that's for sure. Braylon Allen, Kyle Wall Jasper, boy, that was in, well, what a game that was uh, between the Cardinals and the Papermakers. I want to say it was like 71 47. Fond du Lac with the win. Gavin Tyson on the carry. 12th time in the past. 16 playoff appearances for Kimberly that it has advanced to the state semifinals. Papermakers have gone on to win eight titles and appear in 10 championship games. Four yard gain for Tyson, second down and six for Kimberly. They've been able to move the ball, Brett, albeit uh, in a very efficient way, not so much with big plays. See if they can maybe put together a scoring drive here to answer uh, Marquette's big pass play. Looking to his left. Beath. Whoa. That was close. It was close. They're kind, of, they're kind of biting on that now. Yeah. P.J. O'Brien, number 24, the senior defensive back, was kind of closing in on Beath, but uh, it's close to a first down, third and short coming up. Brett, that also could be a potential for a long pass play off of maybe a pump fake or something like that if they're going to be biting down hard on those kind of quick comeback routes. Hey, Franklin leads seven zip over Hamilton uh, after one quarter, so there you go. Sabre is a good team. Of course, so is Sussex Hamilton. That's a great matchup as well. Two fantastic games here in the Division I State Semifinals. Marcus Doucette, and he's got the first down, moving the sticks. Five-yard gain for Doucette. First down and 10 at the 34 for the Kimberly Papermakers. Doucette now, four carries, 13 yards. Again, if anybody out there in the YouTube world, if you got uh, updates, let everyone know. Be sure to post those scores. And give us a follow on Twitter, at PC Brett and uh, Ricardo's at Ricardo De Leon, D-E-L-I-A-N. Maybe a yard for Tyson, second down. Don't forget about uh, our guy, Rosie, right? Yep, Metal Rosie. He got the best spot in the booth. He is right next to the heater. Now, aren't you, why aren't you opening up your press box window? Oh, no. This is fine. I mean, it's a little cool, but I'm fine. It's actually a pretty nice night, right? For uh, we've, we've done some state semifinals yes, where it's been frigid. It has been terrible, believe me. Wind blowing in from the east into the press box, but uh, yeah, this is a pretty good night here. And it's supposed to actually be a pretty nice week of weather coming up, too. I know Mike Sherry was saying that the state uh, finals at Camp Randall just down the road should be pretty nice weather. And that's a rarity. It is. Remember, we... We've done some games where there's been snow. There's Coronado. Oh, big old Coronado. Yeah, I like that wrinkle for the papermakers. Uh, he's he's more than capable of hurting you in the in the pass game. Again, he's such a good extension on that uh, offensive line. He's listed as a fullback slash tight end, 6'1", 255 pounds, and does yeoman's work uh, up, up front. But he's got good hands, soft hands, and he's elusive enough where he can hurt you. There's a first down but for the papermakers ball at the 45-yard line. Ten-yard gain for Coronado. Two receivers far side as Doucette. Whoa, Doucette! Ooh, still on his feet, running hard. Wow, what a run by Marcus Doucette. Wouldn't go down, Ricardo, playing with a... That was kind of an angry run for the junior. Yeah, he was just tossing people around, Brett. 20-yard gain, five carries, 37 yards for Doucette. What, what injury? He doesn't have a lingering injury. He looked pretty good on that. Boy, there are three or four different times in that run. I thought he's going down, but just kept pushing guys out of his way. Now in Hilltoppers territory are the Papermakers, first and ten. Explosive play for the Papermakers, Brett. This is the kind of stuff that you want to see answering back a touchdown for Marquette. I think that offensive line uh, likes to try to get out and do a little blocking as well. Good patience, but ooh, that defense for the Hilltoppers, uh, they'll maybe let you get a few yards, right? And then all of a sudden they're going to stand you up and uh, hurt you, make you, make you feel that. 
as well. Josh Young, thanks. And Green Bay Notre Dame up over Rice Lake, 7-6. to six. Ah, The Tritons. Uh, appreciate that. Another team. Uh, be nice to see uh, a, a good selection of USA Today Network Wisconsin teams. Of course, Milwaukee Marquette, one of our schools, too, and part of the Journal Sentinel audience. That's Milwaukee true. Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, part of our... Uh, Extended familia. Yeah, no doubt about it. So we're happy to bring this game on uh, the Journal Sentinel online, jsonline.com, I should say, and the Journal Sentinel Facebook page. Thanks for joining us here tonight. Very excited to see the Hilltoppers tonight. little play fake going downfield. Got him. Pendleton to V. Catch, and it's a touchdown. 33 yards. Papermakers with the answer. Wow. You talk about great receivers on Marquette's side. Hey, Vita's like, what about me? Mm. Going up there, getting a touchdown grab from Pendleton. 33 yards on that score, Brett. 5.59 left in the second quarter. Boy, Ricardo, that was a pinpoint throw. That might have been one of the better throws I've seen this season from Carson Pendleton. Little play fake, had time, stepped into it, and uh, delivered. He couldn't have dropped it any better, and that was sticky coverage. It Great was concentration very good by coverage. Beath, yes. So Hunter Berry on for the extra point. Snaps good, holds good, kick is good as well, and uh, the papermakers answer. And with 5.59 to play in this second quarter, we're knotted up seven apiece as we look at our Cellcom ETS performance scoreboard. Well, there'll be no shutouts tonight. Yeah. We know no, that. Well, that was an eight-play, 80-yard drive, Brett, by the papermakers. To answer. The, yeah, and with explosive plays here. They had three, three plays of 10 yards or more. You know, the 33-yard touchdown catch by V. 20-yard touchdown run mm -hmm. by Doucette, and then, of course, uh, a nice 10-yard gain from Coronado by uh, pass reception. Doing it through the air a little bit too, right? Uh, two of those, uh, if you want to call it, 10 or more yards plays uh, it through the air, and I think that's what both sides are going to have to be able to somehow find a way to attack uh, through the air, right? Uh, the, the, it's going to be tough to find a lot of openings in, in, in the running games for both sides. Pendleton has been very efficient, Brett. A couple of big plays. He's now 9 of 12 so far in the first half uh, in attempts. 97 yards, including that 33-yard strike to Vith. Catholic Memorial up over Luxembourg Casco, Brett, 7 to 6. Thank you, Fear the Deer. We appreciate all of your updates, Kiwani. 14, Darlington 14. Good stuff. Thank you, everybody out there. Uh, USA Today Network Wisconsin, our our little group, Brett, our little group chat. We appreciate you guys. Absolutely. Hope uh, you can hang out with us for boys and girls basketball. Yes. Boy, we're going to have some great, great teams. Great this teams, season. boys and girls side. Of course, we get one more chance to see Ali Zabel, the uh, fantastic senior at Nina High School. She's going to UConn next season, part of what, U U19 Team USA. This past summer, one yes. gold. She's a 2,000-point scorer. That was a touchback. We appreciate everybody watching tonight. Uh, Wrights Town uh, over St. Croix Falls, 14-7, to thanks to Craig Hoffman. Tigers looking like they could get to Madison. They're making me look smart. Brett, you know, I picked them to make it to state in D5. I just love the run game and the fact that they dropped down to D5. Yeah. That helps. Been coming out of that Northeastern Conference, that's a very, very good league. Right? Hey, Usually yeah. a Division Four league. But they have two teams in the semifinals with Lux Casco and the Tigers. Yes, again, the Northeastern Conference flexing its muscles here in this playoff run. No surprise, right? We've seen the Northeast. We saw Luxembourg Casco and FEL and Freedom in Wrightstown earlier this season on our Varsity Game of the Week streams. Little Shoot's always been very good in that league as well. Oh, some openings here for... Yeah, I guess... Oh, oh what oh, a oh, hit! <laughs> Oh, that was a shot. Was that Wilds who? Well, that was Roby Brown who had it, but, boy, he gets up, pops right back up, oh, and maybe it was okay. Ellison. It was either Ellison or maybe number 22 for uh, Kimberly oh. on that hit. And uh, Ooh, number 14, is, is he coming off the field, or is he going to stay? And No, he's going off the field. I think they got to check him out. He's, he doesn't want to come off the field. Yeah, Rosie, a good observation. Boy, he took a shot, but he popped right back up. Good toughness. 
That just makes me hurt, Rick Ricardo. Yes. Novotny now with the carry. And uh, that'll be a first down and still dragging the pile past the 35-yard line. Seven-yard gain for Novotny. Takes it out to the 36. Now you feel like these two teams, right? Now they're kind Settled of in. a little lathered up, right? Yeah, now they're kind of going after each other a little bit. Back to the line quickly are the Hilltoppers, first and 10. That's a good pace. I like that tempo that they run. Again, Novotny. Oh, play fake. McDevitt, he's going to keep it, and he can hurt you. Looks like that was number 20 for the papermakers. Mikey Wilds, a junior defensive back. Looked like uh, McDevitt had more yards, but only just, what, three-yard pickup is all the uh, quarterback for the Hilltoppers uh, could muster on that run, senior quarterback. But you got to kind of almost have a spy on him a little bit, Ricardo, right? He'll, he'll do a little pump fake, try to freeze the de defense a little bit, and he takes off. Now Novotny again. Oh, oh wow. big Sam McGivern. Nowhere for Novotny to go, and third down coming up. We got the Kimberly fans right in front of us. You can hear the cowbells are loving it. Third and nine. Let's see what the Hilltoppers can do with uh, the talented Peter McDevitt, one of the captains for Keith Klistinski's squad. Ten carries, 27 yards for Novotny, Brett. He has a couple of them for, for loss, though, which is probably not a typical thing for Novotny this year. Roby Brown back in, number 14. Good to see he's okay after that hit. In fact, he's in motion right now. He's so fast. And McDevitt now, he's got plenty of time. Going deep downfield again. It caught. It's a catch. What a throw and what a catch. Ricardo, that's number four, Cam Russell, the senior wide receiver. And McDevitt, he threw it to a spot. No, oh. they're saying incomplete. Wow. Wow, so the official Now listen, Brett, that pass was low. He caught it just above the ground. Mm. I, Brett, thought he, I actually thought he had it. Brett, that erased, I want to say, like a 40-yard oh play. My. Now, yeah, that's a uh, fourth down coming oh up. You can boy. hear the Hilltoppers fans. Yes. I don't think they're and, too happy about that. And I, don't, I think they have a good reason not to be happy. You can see uh, the, the sideline there uh, voicing a little displeasure, let's just say, uh, so the officials came together after it was yes. called a catch and then said no. So punt team's going to have to come out. I it, was I was going to say McDevitt actually threw a nice ball, though. He led his receiver it would, to make the play. It was really close to the ground, though, Brett. Mm. So I don't know if maybe if he if, if he bobbled it or one of the other officials saw that it was bobbled as he was rolling and it maybe it hit the ground. Either way, a big break for Kimberly. Mm. How about Kakana battling back at 7-7? Seven, seven. Good to see for the Ghosts. Luxembourg Casco up six zip. Big high punt. Veith with the fair Without. catch. Yeah. Whoa, fumbled it. Fumbled it. Who's got it? Boy, a scrum now. This is going to be a big call here. Kimberly. I think the Hilltoppers think they've got it. Kimberly says they no, have No, now it. Kimberly. Oh, yep. I see number six, Ellison's coming up with the football. Obviously, Kimberly has it if Whoa. Ellison has it. And they give it to yes. Kimberly. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> Two back-to-back -back big plays. I mean, look. And you can hear the boos again on the far side of the field. Kimberly, you got to take you got to take uh, mm. advantage of this. Well, you got to be careful, though, too. Those are tough. I mean, you're calling for the fair catch, but that guy coming, he's, he's like in your face almost without touching you. That is a tough, tough task. One of the one of the hardest tasks in all of football, Brett, fielding punts. Mm. Well, papermakers at their own 35. Pretty good field position for Kimberly. Touchdown on their last drive. Maybe can we get into a little bit more of just regular football here? It's been a little crazy. Ah. Pendleton hands off to Tyson, trying to bounce Ooh. it outside. Oh, I think mask. there's a face mask. Yep, yep and that's, that's going to negate the fumble. You could clearly see the face mask there, on, uh, and you can see <laughs> who's going on here. A little 54 and 32 for the papermakers. <laughs> Things are getting a little dicey Mason here, Brett. Campbell, and you got 32. Uh, Bryce Roeder, linebacker, going against the offensive lineman there. They're trying to get all tangled up. But uh, that should be a face mask. I yeah, think they're discussing the face mask. If it was a personal foul, perhaps, or just a five yard. Well, we'll see. It's uh, always kind of an interesting Decision by the officials. And uh, and it is a personal foul. Oh, boy. I think that's the right call, Ricardo. Okay. His head kind of went down pretty yeah. hard. And uh, 
That'll give uh, 15 free yards to the papermakers. So we got a lot of guys, a lot of folks uh, giving us some scores. We appreciate that. Thank you. Big, big night uh, setting up. In some ways, Ricardo, it's almost more exciting than, I hate to say it, than the state itself. Oh. oh. Trying to get to the, state, to, to the state championship and I, games. And we'll tell you what, if you have, even if you have out-of-area scores, we'll take all the scores. Yeah, what there are, what, uh, 14 games yes. going on tonight in the, in the seven different divisions. I think that, that math's right. There's Pendleton, handoff to Deuce. Oh, well now what do we have here? Penalty uh, oh, off. So, or so uh, five yards back. Yeah. And you hear a little bit of a Bronx cheer yeah. from the market, folks. False start on Kimberly. Yeah, the uh, referee with the with the mic, the stadium That's mic. That's nice. Tonight. Again, yet another nice, uh, what, bell and whistle here from uh, Bank of Sun Prairie Stadium, Brett? Really what appreciate that. Just looking around at this place. What an amazing <laughs> place. We are so lucky to be here. I mean, I really like you see how it's the Wolves and the Cardinals. And if you look over to the right, Brett, they have uh, kind of like a light scheme that kind of, uh, you know, displays both. Yeah. Yep. Along with the uh, end zones. Kind of got the, 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 not brick wall, but is that the concrete, whatever. I don't know. I'm not exactly it's like sure a facade. what that is. Yeah. I don't, it, it's, it's super cool here. If you haven't yeah. been here, please, if, if you're a Wisconsin football fan, just come down here sometime and watch a game. Beautiful high school stadium. I'm sure folks from Texas or whatever, <laughs> this is small potatoes, but here in Wisconsin, this is pretty cool. And what are we what are we waiting here for? Not sure. Maybe for us to catch our breath. Do you know what Ricardo Marquette uh, earned its 750th football win earlier this season? Uh, Hilltoppers taking down Catholic Memorial 35 nothing in week two. Wow, unsportsmanlike conduct, oh the call against the Hilltoppers coach is what the officials uh, are saying now. So another penalty. Oh, boy. I'm wondering if, was that in reaction to the false start saying something about, you know, like it's about time or you got to keep your cool in this situation. Absolutely. It, I mean, that's 30 free yards that uh, Marquette has given to Kimberly. Boy, and... Uh, a game like this when it's going to be nip and tuck throughout. So much on the line. Just got to keep your cool both sides. And Brett, it, it has ratcheted up intensity-wise without a doubt here in the second quarter. Brett Kinchelow with the big 65-yard touchdown run for Carcona to tie up that game against Wanaki. Doucette now finally playing some football again. Cuts it inside. Ooh, nice job by... Who is that? Uh, Is that 32? I believe so. T.J. O'Brien as well credited number 24, one of those guys that got in a four-yard pickup for Doucette. Some big hard hits tonight. This is a great D1 semifinal, let me tell you. You know, that Kokona won a key game. I mean, Kokona loses Finley Dorio. That's tough. But, again, we talked about it in the 9-2-0 Sports Podcast. Kokona is battle-tested, right, yep. having played in the FBA. And that defense has been playing pretty well of late. So maybe it can be one of those grinded-out games for the Ghosts. Tyson looking for a blocker, and he Got follows. It. Oh, good job by number 60 for the papermakers. That's Nathan Rathkamp, the junior offensive lineman, 6'4", 275 pounds. He got out and was running, and uh, Tyson just followed him, kind of put his hand on his back and just guiding him uh, to the first down and more inside the 30 ball at the 28-yard line. Clock continuing to run, about two and a half minutes to go here in the second quarter. 23 yards on eight carries for Tyson. Brett. Uh, if Kimberly does score here, they get the ball to start the second half. Chance to double up here uh, for the paper makers. Kimberly, do set now. And that offensive line getting a push uh, inside the 25. They'll mark it at the 24. Ball is what? Just shy of the 25. We'll call it the 24, yep. Yeah. Four yard carry for do set. He has eight carries, Brett, 47 yards. Nice night so far for Marcus Doucette. And I think a nice night for that offensive line as well. They're, yeah, they're, they're getting, doing a great job. Getting off uh, the line on the snap and, and really giving these uh, running backs uh, some room and giving Pendleton some time. Hand off to Doucette again. Look, no, yeah, somehow splits a little bit, but third down coming up. Inside the 25, may, well, did he get a yard or not? It's close. I don't think he got. Well, maybe they are giving it to him at the 23, so we'll call it a long five, Brett. Hilltoppers want a timeout, trying to conserve some time if they can uh, get the stop. 
boy, oh boy. This is a, this is a great one. This is just what we thought it'd be. Marquette, Kimberly turning out to be a great game here. Reedsville down 14 to nothing. Really? Rice Lake up over Notre Dame now, Brett. 14 7. Thank you, Marks Outdoors. Brian Brick, thank you for that uh, update as well. Grafton up 7 0 over Stoughton. Thank you, Jim Yage. Touchdown, Lux Casco up 13 7. I think we announced some of these scores before. Again, 14 6. Wrightstown leads St. Croix Falls. Thank you again to Brian Brick. We appreciate all of your updates, guys. We can't do, couldn't do this without you guys. We appreciate you guys watching. Oh, Doriel's back in at co uh, quarterback, Green Bay Payton says. Oh, really? Well, that is. That's a big. And Julie Hartjes, thank you for that as well. That is great. Oh, that we, Good to hear. You would hate to see Kakana go down without, you know, obviously their three-year quarterback, their three-year starting quarterback. We all think the world of Dorio. Third and five at the 23. That's the situation here at Bank of Sun Prairie Stadium. One thirty-six left in the second quarter. Hocon or I'm sorry, Kimberly trying to convert. It's be interesting uh, decision if they're short here on fourth down. I What's think I think it's just a bit too far for Barry, though. Wouldn't you think? Yeah, probably so. It's hard to hard to say. Not really any wind to talk about. Doucette. Oh boy, and nice just tackle. Can't, yeah, that was big old ninety-seven. Oh boy, that's a big kid. Oreg Bonnie, yeah, six foot, two hundred eighty-four. Brett, he broke right through, took down Doucette for that what one-yard loss. Yeah, one of the captains. So fourth down coming up, and uh, who's calling timeout? Hilltoppers again, and uh, fourth down and decision time for Chad Michael was. I think you're probably right. Right, the ball is at the twenty. That's a forty-two yard. Yeah, that's a long kick. And I just saw Barry. He's out there though, Brett. I just saw him. Do a kick. Okay. They might attempt to do it. Now, is this a little bit dangerous? If you don't make the kick, you're giving Marquette a fair amount of time. They only have, I think, one timeout left. One timeout left. But Ricardo, look at the uh, the goalposts, the flags. There's, there's still, there's, there's no wind. Okay. Fair enough. So. And I'm, I'm, I'm no, I know Hunter Berry's a very good kicker. It's just we haven't seen him attempt something from this far, though. I do believe he has a very good leg. So yeah, Berry is out. Let's see where they want to officially spot this they're going to put it at the 31 so a 41 yard field goal attempt for hunter berry and a chance to give the papermakers the lead the good kicker got a good leg and again no wind to contend with at all here at bank of sun prairie stadium oh now we have a timeout uh, Brett, uh, here's some other scores here. Again, Jose, is if this, thank you for the update. Franklin 21, Sussex Hamilton 0. Wow. Now, Franklin out of that Southeastern Conference, Brett, we know they're a great program. Remember that great team with Miles Burkett? Yeah. Uh, they recently won the Division One state title. Luxembourg Casco, Brett, 13 7 over Catholic Memorial. Not that I thought Lux Casco couldn't take the lead and possibly win that game, but that is encouraging to see if you're a Spartans mm -hmm. fan. Edgar and Banger, n no score at the half. To me, Edgar, and maybe folks out there, if you want to agree with me or disagree, tell me what you think. I think Edgar's the best small school in the state, but they're having a tough one with Banger. You're meeting good teams at this stage of the season, aren't you? I mean, it's a state semifinal, so there are no easy matchups anywhere. Kiwani 14, Darlington 14. Wow, okay. Thank you, Brian Brick. You've been helping us out, my friend. So Kimberly Ricardo calling the timeout, getting things uh, resituated for this 41-yard high snap. Barry, and oh, that's going to be, be, be short. Yeah. What, what happened? Oh, okay. It was a high <laughs> snap. Yeah. But I don't know if that would have even had the distance. Uh, Might have been just a little out of his range. But, yeah, Ricardo, where, where does the ball go? 31. 31-yard line? Yep. So with 125 and that quarterback. And a timeout to go. Yeah, they could. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Not at the. What? Well, it should be at the 31 because that's where he attempted the kick. What's going on here? The officials are talking about this. Is there a penalty? What is. Uh, They're going to put it at oh, the 20. Oh, the, is it the high school rules? They do it at the 20. Touchback. Okay, yeah. well, then that makes a lot of sense then. So We talk about that a lot okay. on our streams, right? It's so hard to keep track of all <laughs> the. Everyone has different yeah, rule books, all, Brett. All the levels have different rules. So 
Field goal attempt no good for Barry and the papermaker, so Hilltoppers last minute and a half to go. And uh, now McDevitt, watch out, McGivern coming hard. And I think, is that Roby Brown yes, again, number 14? Well, he's a nice player. Quick. 5'6", 140-pound running back junior, but yeah, he's <laughs> he can move quickly. And a good job to get out of bounds. And now you kind of really uh, the strength, I think, is, is a, of this Hilltoppers offense is that McDevitt kind of pull the trigger here, get things to happen. Ooh. Oh. Make things happen, I should say. That was intended for number 88. Had him there, just uh, couldn't connect. Jude Ballinger, Ballinger, junior tight end. Third down, and the clock stopped. Boy, what? you got to stop here for the papermaker's yeah, defense. Yeah, I didn't even sudden. think get, about you that. You get the ball back uh, with two timeouts. McDevitt waiting for the snap, claps his hands, looks to his left, and got the first down. Nice quick throw. Oh, fumble. No, it was out of bounds. Okay. Uh, that's number four, Cam Russell. And just doing enough, right, to get that first down, get out of bounds, and a lot of time left. Ball at 35. Another score here. Thank you again, Marks Outdoors. Appreciate all the help. Stratford 14, Grantsburg 7. First down and 10 for Marquette. McGivern, watch out! Oh, There's a got sack! Him. McGivern coming through. Well, how did McDevitt even just kind of spin his way forward for a few yards? But Mc, McGivern, Ricardo, he came flying into the backfield. Yeah, it'll be a loss of about three yards. I'm, I'm surprised that the officials let that go as long as it did. Yeah. Kimberly going to take a timeout. So it'll be a second and 13 from the 32 for Marquette. Again, the Hilltoppers have had some big plays, Brett. Uh, the biggest one for them, 32-yard touchdown uh, catch for them. That was from McDevitt to Thad Hoffman. That's their lone score on the game. Again, Bryson Veith with a 33-yard touchdown catch for Kimberly. That's all the scoring, 7-7 as we're nearing the end of the first half. All right, let's see some of these other scores. Kiwani now up ahead, Brett, 21-14 over Darlington. Again, Brian Brick, we appreciate your help. Fear the Deer says Luxembourg Casco scored on a 99-yard touchdown run. Now, is that true, Fear the Deer? We need to see, we need to hear, we, get, we need some confirmation on that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long run. If it is, I wonder if it's Max Ronsman. Oh, he's a good Very player. Very good player. Good wrestler, too. Second and 13, 51 seconds left at the 32 for Marquette. McDevitt. Looking to his right, downfield, and ooh, he had a receiver there. He, you know there. what? A little he, off timing, though. I was gonna say, Brett, because uh, you know Hoffman, there there was a space there for a catch and maybe go right out of bounds, but just not able to connect on that one. McDevitt, so what do you do here if you're the Hilltoppers? You're behind the sticks, third and thirteen. The last thing you want to do is do something, uh, you know, make a mistake, right? So do you just play it safe, hand it off, and force Kimberly to burn a timeout and punt it away? see what the Hilltoppers want to do and that's exactly what they're going to do Novotny and I think the papermakers were ready for it so Kimberly will burn I think that final time out ball will be at the 34 so gain of two yards for Novotny brings yep. up fourth Kimberly gonna let that clock run Ricardo oh. they must be just content maybe with where this game is at to take it into the locker room as you said to start the second half with the football okay Hilltoppers, I don't think they have to run a play, do they? I don't believe they have to. Brett, some interesting scores. Luxembourg Casco, according to Fear the Deer 85, 27, 20 to 7 over Catholic Memorial. Mm. Yeah, that's going to be it, Ricardo. Well, who took the timeout? What? What, are they going to try a long pass or something like that? Interesting. Grafton 7-0 seven, oh, seven nothing over Stoughton. Too bad about, I mean, Grafton, congrat congratulations to them. They were able to get past Menasha, Brett. That very well could have been Menasha playing Stoughton yeah. in that semifinal in D3. Thank you, Donovan Fitzsimmons. He's saying Lux Casco did score on a 90-plus yard play. Donovan, did you see who was it? Was it the quarterback, Ronsman? I wonder who that was, but... Either way, Lux Casco, Brett. 
Are you kidding me? 20 to 7 over Catholic Memorial? Yeah. That's Rosie, are you hearing this? Can you believe that? We're talking about the Spartans in the 920 Sports Podcast, which, by the way, you should go check out on iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Play, 920 Sportscast. Now, look at this. Uh, Kimberly defense playing way back, right? The, Knock it down. Yeah, they don't want anything uh, weird to happen as McDevitt now. He's going to go deep downfield, trying to rainbow one, and just out of bounds. Uh, yeah. And that's how the half comes to a close. <laughs> okay. Let's all take a deep breath, yeah. shall we? I think we need a little bit of a break, a halftime break, right, Rosie? I think, uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, quite the second half and kind of what we uh, we figured here with these two uh, standout teams as uh, both retreating to, uh, well, where is Marquette going? Do they have they have a little locker room uh, that they're heading off to? It looks like Kimberly's going to stay on the football field here in the, in the uh, oh, south I, end zone. I don't zone. know if they do. They're just going off the side here. I'll just... Couple more. Hey, Chase Collins checking out. He says, "Hey, Luke Keller. Luke Keller. We remember. We remember him from Nina. Of course. Elite 11, first team All Conference tight end at the Kakana versus Wanaki game. As a fan, I'm sure. Okay. But uh, yes, Brett, it was a 99-yard touchdown run. They were pinned back from a Catholic Memorial punt. Says Spear the Deer. Mm -hmm. Wow. Bangor zero. Edgar zero. That's a bit of a surprise to me. But are we ready for halftime? I'm sorry. Well, you Rosie. know, I'm just go ahead. Okay. Uh, well, halftime here, Ricardo, yep. as you mentioned, at uh, Bank of Sun Prairie Stadium at Ashley Field. And a quick look at our Cellcom ETS performance scoreboard shows the game tied up at seven apiece. We'll talk more about tonight's game and uh, what we have coming up digitally at USA Today Network Wisconsin. Also, some more state semifinal scores after this short break. Cellcom is celebrating Black Friday all month long with our second exclusive sale of the month. November 10th through the 20th, save up to $600 on phones from our top brands when you make the switch. Visit cellcom.com slash deals for details. Promote your business, unite your team, or just get your name out there with help from the professionals at Cooney's Embroidery and Sportswear. Family owned and operated for over 20 years, we have the skills and experience to customize your apparel and spread the word about your business or organization. We can put your logo, name, or anything else you want on any article of clothing. From embroidery and screen printing to graphic design and heat press services, we've got you covered. Call today.
from the top of the 222 building on College Avenue in downtown Appleton. It's Varsity Roundtable. Ladies and gentlemen, Ricardo Arguello. Welcome back to Bank of Sun Prairie Stadium at Ashley Field. We're in Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, the WIA Division I state semifinal showdown between the Kimberly Papermakers and the Marquette University Hilltoppers. Again, as we look at our uh, halftime score, Excelcom and ETS performance scoreboard, we are tied up seven apiece. A great, great matchup between these two fantastic programs again. Thanks to, uh, well, I guess we, we, we ran some commercials uh, with, with uh, Cellcom and ETS, so we got the, those promos out for the for the halftime part of things. But, Ricardo, yep. I know you're uh, keeping track of some scores and uh, you got oh. some thoughts about this game as well, right? Yeah, just for, uh, well, just to let you know, um, 6 of 12 for 91 yards. That's McDevitt's stats with the pick and the touchdown. And I know what you're wondering, well, what about our guy Carson Pendleton? Well, he's 9 of 12 for 97 yards. Okay. And the touchdown to Vieth. Uh, Marcus Doucette, 10 carries, 47 yards. That leads Kimberly's rush attack. So uh, I have, I'll, I'll take some time out here to do uh, the leading rusher, Novotny, for, for Marquette in a little bit, Brett. But I'm going to run through some scores here. This is not really a surprise. Aquinas leading Hustacon, 30 to 7. Uh, that's, again, Hustaford and Horicon. Oh, that's a, such a strange thing. But... Uh, looking at through some of these other scores. Baldwin Woodville is losing to Lodi Brett, 28 to 21. You know how much we love that middle border. Mm -hmm. Baldwin Woodville down a touchdown. Michael Whitlow, he is at that Franklin game, Brett. Okay. 21 nothing. They're leading over Sussex Hamilton. Again, for our Marquette fans here, uh, the Journal Sentinel, they're two reporters. We know they're friends of the well, of they're, the, they're of the live of our, stream. They're part of our, our extended group. family. Yeah. Michael Whitlow does a great job. Zach Bellman uh, covers, I think Whitlow covers like the suburban schools, and Whitlow, or I'm sorry, Bellman covers kind of more city, um, city of Milwaukee proper. But uh, both of them do a great job there on the prep end for the Journal Sentinel, so be sure to read their stuff. And you can also read my stuff. I'm going to have a recap of this game as well, Brett, uh, with the Kimberly angle, of course. Uh, that will be later tonight, but look for it tomorrow morning for sure, uh, around 9 a.m., I'll have that uh, completed and, and ready for everyone to check out because this has been a great game, Brett, something we kind of anticipated. Uh, if I can just right, right away segue into some of my thoughts. Marquette has really hit on some big plays, Brett, but I think the Kimberly penetrating defensive line has made things just a bit, has thrown things just off a bit uh, for Marquette. Now, they rolled past Fond du Lac last week, 49 nothing. You know, I knew Kimberly with a week of practice, they'll be able to kind of take away some of the things that Marquette likes to do. A lot of it, again, when you get pressure on the quarterback, Brett, that's going to throw off timing. That's going to make uh, the quarterback just a, a bit wary about unleashing some of those long bombs. I think you've kind of seen that come to fruition. Key for Marquette is to get that run game going. Tough. You get a run game going against Kimberly, you're going to be able to complete some of those passes. But uh, right now, Kimberly's defense is really doing a job. you got to give Marquette's defense as well, Brett, a big credit. You know on that uh, last drive for Kimberly that ended with the missed field goal, they had a couple of penalties, one on the coaching staff, 
one on a face mask, 30 yards of penalties, but they held firm, did not allow Kimberly to score. That was big, big for, uh, for Marquette because Kimberly starts the second half, Brett, with the ball. Easier said than done, though, right, for, for both offenses to try to run against those defenses. I mean, I, there's – Yeah, and I'll tell you what, Kimberly has had much better success yeah. running the ball. Uh, they have about 90 yards total rushing. Uh, just, I'm looking just off my stats here, Brett. So they have been had a little bit more consistent run game uh, for the papermakers. Yeah, so – but hard-earned yards. You, know, you had that big run by Marcus Doucette. I know that led to the touchdown uh, pass from Pendleton – to Veith in the second quarter, but uh, you know, I'd have no idea how the second half is going to go. I mean, these two the two evenly matched teams, right? Two really good defenses, two opportunistic offenses, and uh, like a coin flip. I mean, really, a, it's, right. it's, it's going to be one big play that, that's probably going to secure that, maybe one big turnover, but uh, to, to try to look in the crystal ball and figure out what's going to happen or what kind of adjustments or changes are going to be made, who knows? Uh, this has just been a sensational state semifinal matchup, and uh, we suspect that the next 24 minutes will be much of the same as we saw over the first 24 minutes. Hey, I want to plug uh, Clubhouse Live for the folks that uh, don't know. We do stream it to the face a Journal Sentinel Facebook page as well, but that's our weekly Green Bay Packers show that takes place at the Fox Club. That's live at Neuroscience Group Field at Fox City Stadium in Grand Chute, home of the Wisconsin Timber Rattlers. The minor league affiliate of the Milwaukee Brewers, and that's also the home to Clubhouse Live. Uh, Keyshawn Nixon and Josiah DeGora oh, yeah. are splitting duties, co-hosting duties. It's going to be Keyshawn Nixon's turn on Monday. He'll bring a teammate guest to Monday's show, and uh, I'll make that announcement uh, who the guest will be on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Clubhouse Live. But check it out. It's not your typical X's and O's show. It's more of an entertainment fun show, although, of course, we do talk football. We'll be looking back at that Packers-Steelers game during Monday's show. Show starts at 6.30, but uh, the gates, the stadium gates open at 4. Admission is free. It's a lot of great food there, great drinks. We give away some great prizes, bobbleheads, autographed photos. Other and me, I add, you yeah. get to boo me. Well, yeah, I'm the co-host, and, of course, Ricardo as well. Ricardo, a huge Chicago Bears fan, right? He's the only Chicago Bears fan that co-hosts. And I'm pretty happy, Brett. My Packers show. My Bears won. They did. 16-13 in what is officially what was officially the toilet bowl. Ew, I didn't even <laughs> but, watch it. But, yeah, you didn't miss much. No. <laughs> no. Uh, but yes, it was a battle of ineptitude, and uh, the Bears were just a little bit less inept than the Panthers. Okay. Because uh, don't the Packers play the Panthers? Yeah. Okay. I'm just telling later. you. I think I think the Packers are going to have about seven or eight sacks. Yeah, uh, that's that that's a Patrick offensive line. It, they didn't look good. Let me that, tell you that's that. That's a pad the stats yeah. type of game. No, I watched the Bucks and Pacers. Yes, and and Giannis had a big game and they lost. So did Tyrese Halbert. Tyrese Halbert, Oscar, Oscar, yeah. North, right? Love uh, the kid. He's wearing the uh, shoes to uh, that, that that were representing Leon's frozen custard in R town. May, may I say for those of you in the Milwaukee area who aren't familiar, uh, Tyrese Hamilton's from Oshkosh North and. A friend of the Varsity Roundtable. Yeah, he's been on Varsity Roundtable. Maybe tell people about That's that. That's our Varsity Roundtable. Now, this is in the Fox Valley. Is our online high school sports talk show. Uh, it's on every Wednesday at 7 o'clock. We have, uh, you know, athletes from the, the Fox Valley area on the show in a talk show format. And, yes, Tyrese Halliburton has been on the show back when he was a star for Oshkosh North, when they were winning that state title his senior year. He was on the show. But uh, we regularly highlight the top teams, the top players from our area. It's a 30 to 45 minute uh, talk show. We have a lot of fun. Uh, this past week we had Kimberly Boys Volleyball because they made it to the state semifinals uh, over there at the Resch Center. We're going to take a couple of weeks off though, Brett, uh, for this next Wednesday and the following Wednesday, which is right before Thanksgiving. We'll be back November 29th. Okay, sounds good. 7 o'clock uh, start time for that. You can watch on postcrescent.com. As Ricardo said, facebook.com slash postcrescent. Oh, sorry. USA Today Network, Wisconsin YouTube channel. That's how you can find Clubhouse Live as well. Yes. Actually, we st if you can't make the show in person, we, we would love you for you to stop on by and meet the guys and their teammate guests. But if you can't, uh, you can always watch it live uh, on all of our websites, all of our Facebook pages, including facebook.com slash Clubhouse Live, as I mentioned, facebook.com slash Packers News, and our USA Today Network, Wisconsin YouTube channel. This is our last varsity football game of the week, our, our, our live stream of the week. And uh, Ricardo, then, then it's time to switch gears. I got to start looking at that those schedules for the boys and girls basketball season. So we will be in a nice, toasty, warm gym 
uh, sooner rather than later. Hoping we can squeeze in a, a, a game right before Thanksgiving maybe to kind of get uh, get our basketball shoes on and get uh, used to that. A little bit faster game, right, Rosie? We're going to have to – it's always a, an adjustment period when we go from the football season to the basketball season. But I'll let you know what, uh, what game we're going to stream, uh, our varsity basketball game of the week, on uh, my Twitter account. So please give me a follow at PC Bretzi. I would appreciate it. And again, you can follow Ricardo at Ricardo De Leon and Rosie at Metal Rosie, uh, M E T A L R O S I E. By the way, also uh, speaking of our stuff and plugging our stuff, we've got a great uh, sub uh, uh, digital subscription deal right now. Uh, one dollar for the next six months, just one dollar, you get unlimited digital access to all of our, our our stuff, right? All of our content, all of our coverage. Uh, on any device. It includes uh, national reporting with our USA Today uh, Sports Plus app. Uh, all these streams, news, uh, features, business, uh, great, the great high school and Packers content. Uh, everywhere. And whatever you want, basically, it, it's right there for $1. So $1 for the next six months. Just go to any of our sites, like postpressing.com, for instance. You should see a little subscribe link or tab at the top right and just get in on that Ricardo's one dollar you can't go wrong come on one dollar that's American by the way and uh, you can't beat that can't beat that run down the first half scoring as uh, the teams kind of finishing up uh, their halftime uh, powwows if you will kind of getting over uh, I, I, trying to figure out maybe some new strategies I don't know the teams are stretching in either end zone but uh, Marquette got on the scoreboard first a 32 yard pass from McDevitt to Hoffman, that was with 10:22 to play. Kick was good, seven nothing. The Hilltoppers. That was off of a Kimberly fumble, by the way. Uh, but then the Papermakers answered an eight-play, 80-yard drive, featured three plays of 10 uh, yards or more. It was a 33-yard pass from Pendleton to Bryson Veith. Kick was good with 5:59 remaining in the quarter, and that's where we're at as we look at our Cellcom and ETS performance scoreboard. Seven-seven tie in this state semifinal. Well, I'll let everyone know, by the way, uh, one more thing to promo, Brett. Uh, for those of you who are interested, this is really more of a local thing of the Art 9 Tool Sports Podcast, obviously, yeah. that's in the name of the Valley Podcast, the uh, only online, uh, not online, I'm sorry, the only podcast dedicated to high school sports in the Fox Valley. But this time, this past Wednesday, we uploaded. Who was uh, on? We had a big guest. Yes, WIAA Executive Director Stephanie Hauser mm. came down to pay us a visit uh, at uh, the mothership over there, 222 West College Avenue. That is the Post Crescent in the 222 building on the 10th floor. Let me tell you, she was there uh, last week, uh, last weekend covering, not covering, well, running the, the high school volleyball tournament, that kind of stuff. She stopped by, paid us a visit. We had a nice lengthy conversation with her. We talked all things WIAA, got some interesting thoughts from her. Uh, specifically, you know, like on competitive, you know, equity, that kind of stuff, along with electronic seating. She kind of gave a State of the Union address for the WIAA and also talked about some maybe misconceptions that uh, the WIA gets, you know, from uh, you know, a lot of folks, <coughs> quite frankly, and some of it's very loud on the Twitter or the X. In essence, most of the big decisions aren't their decisions. No, it's the school's decisions uh, the collectively. Member schools and member the schools, associations, yes. So right? please give that a listen. Again, you can find it on iTunes. Stitcher or Google Play, just look up 920 Sports Podcast. You'll see my name, Ricardo Arguello. Subscribe to it. Uh, you'll get the latest. We do it every couple weeks, or we try to anyway. And uh, we'll, we also have featured guests on there. We have been this season more regularly. So please check it out. I think it's a can't-miss interview. I think you really should check it out. She had a lot to say. I agree, and a really good conversation. Boy, she, uh, she's, WI is in good hands. I think that that was a fantastic hire for Steph, obviously, in her career path, but obviously the organization and bringing her in at the executive director uh, position. Uh, she's just very well-spoken, a people person, and uh, good for her to kind of lay it out there and say, hey, th you know, th these aren't our decisions. Uh, you know, so leave me alone. Hey, by the way, Andrew Picard, remember our buddy? Yeah. He has some a little bit more info, yes. Little shoot, or I'm sorry, little shoot. Luxembourg, Luxembourg Casco is up over Catholic Memorial 27. Rosman did have two touchdown runs, including a 98 yeah, well, okay, yard it touchdown. Him. It was him, Max Rosman, yeah. Yeah, so. We were uh, very impressed when watching him against FBL earlier this season, week eight, I believe that was. Let's check this out in D2. Brett Badger up 28 to 6 over Sun Prairie East. Badger knocked off Kettle Moraine 
last week big in the night. quarterfinals. Big night here in Sun Prairie. Opening kickoff and uh, fielded in the end zone is uh, Bryson V. So touchback, and Kimberly will open the second half with the ball on its own 20-yard line. Be very interesting to see how this first drive of the second half goes because you know they're just, they're just, these coaches are moving chess pieces, right? You got Chad Michaelwitz at, and his staff with the papermakers, and of course Keith Kostinski and his staff with the Hilltoppers and the game within the game, right? You're right. Trying to figure out what is going to be the decisive chess move to win this football game. Stratford up over Grantsburg 21 7 at the half. It's a D5. D6, I'm sorry. Penalty. Semifinal. Oh, a little play fake. Whoa! Almost. Brett, we were talking about them sitting on that slant. That's P.J. O'Brien, number 24. He was there for Bryson Veith. Nice little play fake. But uh, That's a dangerous throw now. Is. I think they've gone to the well a few too many times on that. Yeah, no, that ball is tipped up in the air. You're waiting for somebody to kind of uh, sneak in. You know who we haven't seen yet tonight is Braden Ellison at quarterback. That's true. That, that has been a, tr a, a typical thing the last few games. But he's been all Pendleton tonight. Yeah, he's been uh, very good. Second down with Doucette next to him. And the handoff is Doucette looking for some space. Just not much there. Finally brought down. I think that's big old number 97 again. That, uh, how do you say that uh, his name, Ricardo? Who? Number 97 for the Hilltoppers. You, you, I think you Pelly have Pelly Origbani. Origbani. I think they might be right. This, he's a captain. Big, good, good looking player. Uh, Ooh, six foot, 284 pound senior. <laughs> good size player. Wow. Yeah, he's uh, plugging up the middle uh, very well. So here you go. Third and seven and a chance for the Hilltoppers to not only get off uh, third, uh, three and out, but the, they had a pretty good field position as well. So Pendleton looking to his left. Going Look out. to, whoa. Rams. And That's where are they going to go? He, he might have gotten it. He needed to get to the 30, and he did. Brennan Grams with a big first down catch, Ricardo, right at the marker. I was thinking. I don't know if he had gotten enough, but apparently he did. Oh, that sideline official on the far side. I was watching him. He was uh, the spot. He, he went right to the 30-yard line and immediately uh, asked uh, the chain gain to reset and a first down, big first down uh, pitch and catch there between Pendleton and Grams. Two receivers far side for Kimberly. Again, just underway in the second half. Tie game between Marquette and the Papermakers. Doucette now. Again. Arubon, Aru, <laughs> how do you say? I can't say that name. You had it, you had it down. Oh, uh, Orugbani. 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 He made the tackle again. I think I'm just, you're going to have to say that name. Orugbani. Okay. That's was one of those names I just cannot get out of my mouth. He is a captain and has been so active on that defensive line yeah, for the Hilltoppers. He's, he's Heck good. of a player. Yeah, watch number 97 in that uh, Hilltoppers middle of the defense, defensive lineman. Good looking player. Second and nine for Kimberly. Tyson. They're trying to move, uh, <laughs> just trying <laughs> to get any sort of a push, but nothing doing. Ooh, yeah, I mean, that's another one yard gain. Kind of seeing Marquette's defense really tightening up here. Nice for Kimberly on the passing game to have Brennan Grams back because he was having a nice season then uh, was out, I think, for a while with an injury. So uh, previous uh, third down play, he made the big catch. But you never know. Sometimes those those are the those are the X factors, right, uh, in a game like this. He's a very talented receiver, number 23 for the, for the papermakers. Nine carries, 24 yards for Gavin Tyson. Pendleton rolling to his right. Going to unleash it and caught by oh. Beath, and he's got the first down. Another big third down completion for the papermakers. Moves the chains again. Boy, Beath just money. Yeah, needed to get to the 40, got to about the 41. That's uh, got to be aggravating, right, if you're the, the, the Hilltoppers. Defense that uh, is so sturdy, sto so stout. You got to give Pendleton credit. He has 11 for 14, 113 yards, but very efficient. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say surgical, but he has uh, really thrown some really precise passes. Doucette trying to ooh. No, but hey, is guess, that our guy? Guess, guess who? Holy mackerel! That yeah. was Pelly again, Origbani. Mm. 
And there's an injury, Brett. On the far side, it is number 32, Kadri Lee. Boy, he's down, and I hope he's all right. I'm sorry. It was, I'm sorry. It's Bryce Roder. Yeah, the right, the senior the linebacker. The captain. Yes. Five eleven, two hundred two pounds. You know, it's kind of interesting as I was just thinking about this. You know, Kimberly's used to playing in close games all season long, right? Not so much for the Hilltoppers when you think about it. And uh, how will that play uh, into uh, kind of how this game goes on? Look at the Hilltopper scores: a uh, thirty-five zip, thirty-nine zip, forty-nine zip, thirty-five zip, seventy zip, forty-seven zip, thirty-three zip. 49-7, 42-15, 42-zip. Right, and Kimberly uh, convert, uh, uh, on the flip side has really played a lot of close games. Yeah. Wanakee now up 17-7. to seven. Oof. Again, Doriel's back in for Kakana. So maybe they can make a run there at the end. Second and 11 right here for Kimberly at the 40. It's going to have to be that passing game for the papermakers to loosen things up, right? Because... Horik Bonnie right now is uh, wreaking, ha wreaking havoc uh, in the backfield. There's Tyson again, squirts through, gets to about the 44. Ten carries, 28 yards for Gavin Tyson. But yeah, that tough sledding against that Marquette interior defensive line. I mean, big old, well, we were talking about Oreg Bonnie, but number 95, Tate Kowalik. I mean, some big kids up there. Who else am I missing here? Number 92, Cole Fisher, 6'3", 242. They got size, they got length, Brett, and they got high-end motors. Well, let's see if the papermakers can convert another third down as Pendleton looking to his left. Going to let it go. Whoa! Oh. And a fourth down coming up. Boy, I thought maybe... When that was uh, thrown, I thought number nine, Josh Knacker, the senior linebacker, I thought he had a shot. Yeah, Brett, he was trying to throw it to a specific spot just over the uh, outstretched hands of Knacker, Brett, but just off a little bit on his intended receiver. So punting situation for Kimberly. Wrightstown up 21-12 over St. Croix Falls. Thank you, Dan Cohn, for helping us out with that one. Looking good for the Tigers, right? Look Punts. out, almost a block there, and... That punt, takes oh, a good good it does. In about to the 28-yard line. So the Hilltoppers hold uh, to start this second half. Let's see if the Papermakers defense can do the same and keep this defensive battle going uh, throughout the second half. We thank everyone again for tuning in on our YouTube channel. First down and 10 from the 30 for Marquette. McDevitt waiting for it, claps his hands. A little handoff to Novotny, and Novotny spins around, gets a few. Boy, I thought that play might have had uh, more of potential there, yeah. Brett. But again, Kimberly's just closing those lanes. Yeah, two uh, fantastic defenses uh, doing their thing tonight. Marquette won the Division I state championship, uh, Ricardo, back in 09. I was there for that one. I remember covering, not covering it, but watching it. 7-0 victory over Menominee Falls that day. There's McDevitt now. Hand off to Novotny again. Oh, he has Novotny room there. spins. Oh, he got the first down. Good run and a last second kind of lunge for the first down. Hilltoppers, uh, they've advanced to the state semifinals in four other seasons, 2010, 2014, 2015, and 2018. Of course, two of those against Kimberly is uh, Novotny oh now. Oh, boy. Oh, nothing doing there. And that was, uh, is that Hanlon there with the was, tackle? I think it was, yeah. Mentioned Hilltoppers with 750th win in their program. They've won nine state titles overall. I believe eight WISA titles and one WIAA championship. Of course, Kimberly Papermakers with eight state championships. A lot of uh, trophies in these... Uh, school's trophy cases but when it comes to football. McDevitt going to sling it. Oh, and somehow he got wow, away. He almost stayed yeah, in bounds. Yeah, he did. He, he's, papermakers are fortunate that he stepped out of bounds because he had some running room there along that far sideline. Instead, it's going to be third and 11 for the Hilltoppers.
Devitt claps his hands. He's going to roll right. Oh, he's getting held. Looking downfield, and uh, that's into the turf, fourth down. So the papermakers hold as well. All right, just, oh, okay, hold on a minute. Shout, Suzanne says, shout me out, Ricardo. I am doing that. Anybody else need one? Just let me know. Oh, boy. Peyton Grant Granado says, can I get a shout out? You sure can. Thank you all for watching. We really appreciate it. We really do. Peyton Granado says it's, I'm sorry, Peyton, if you're, a, if you're male or female, either way, it's his or her birthday. You know, there Peyton you is kind of one of those, uh, you don't know if it's uh, a male or female name. That's true. Just, just being safe. Bryson Veith back deep. Uh, Thomas Myers about 10 or 15 yards or so in front. Nice high punt. Yeah, got to be careful here, Brett, with those high punts. Veith, boy, that's a good punter. Yeah. Number 18 again, Eric Schmidt doing a great job. Those really high punts. And uh, tough, I would think, to try to spot that ball in this nighttime sky, and you got a whole bunch of uh, angry hilltoppers running at you at the same time. All right, ball is going to be marked at the 23. First down and 10 for Kimberly Brett. You know, I have McDevitt, seven completions, 14 attempts, 93 yards. Okay. So Kimberly is doing a great job of keeping him under wraps yeah. for the most part. And Ricardo, I think a lot of that is because the Hilltoppers are playing behind the sticks. Seems like a lot of third and long situations. Yeah. Second and long, so yeah. Again, both defenses just playing lights out. Little play fake. Pendleton's got all day. Beef. Whoa. Oh. Boy, <laughs> We're boy. talking about that, weren't we? Number eight for the Hilltoppers, Nate Schram, senior linebacker, 5'10", 240 pounds. He was there. Again, you get a little worried, right, if you're the paper mm -hmm. readers. I've been seeing too many bobbles. And one of these times, that's going to be picked off. So you can see Kimberly trying to open things up. Keep uh, try to open it up for the for the running game with the, through its passing game and Pendleton's doing a pretty good job so far, very good job. Remember his brother Caden talked about him numerous times on these streams. Yes, stellar career at quarterback for the Papermakers as well. You got a three-year starter, right? So yeah, both these guys. They're also basketball players, so yeah. they're athletic as well. Tyson trying to get through. Same thing with uh, Marquette's defensive line, Brett. There was an opening there, a rail, but it closed in a hurry. Yeah. Oh, Tate and we have an injury down. Tate Kowalik was one of those guys. Looks like number 60 for the Papermakers is down, uh, Nathan Rathkamp. But uh, Kowalik, uh, number 95, a senior defensive lineman, uh, got a hold of Tyson and, and brought him down. Hopefully uh, Rathkamp is okay. T-Bert, he's asking for a shout-out as well. Oh, yeah, Ricardo, we got also have a Marquette kid down as oh, well. Oh, wow. That's number 92. He's finally getting back on his feet. That's Cole Fisher, junior defensive lineman. Both guys, Rathcamp and Fisher, walking off the field. That's good, good, to, good, see. good to see. Shout-out to Allison. She's watching in Kimberly. Easy drive, right, from the Valley? It's yeah. An hour and a half tops. Absolutely. Except for me and Rosie, we came down together. Okay. We came down together. We, 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 we passed the time with some good conversation. So here you go. Third down coming up. Good music. Yeah, we got a little serious channel going on. Plays a little classic <laughs> yeah. re rewind. How about That's that? That's right. Third down and six. Well couple third down completions to start the second half with the papermakers on their previous drive. Let's see if Pendleton can do it again as he's going to roll to his left. Going downfield. Whoa, nice. Rams, nice catch. Where are they going to spot it, though? It's going to be a yard shy, and I think the punt team's going to have to come out. I think it's too risky on fourth and one. Yeah, five-yard gain. Ethan Doucette saying, uh, go Kimberly. I saw Thank you, Ethan, for checking out the live stream. Yeah, good luck tomorrow in your football game. I chatted with Ethan's mother, Rosie, and I did oh, when okay. we came in. It sounds like then from here, uh, the, the Doucettes will be going, I guess, over to Winona tomorrow. 
Shout out to Tyler Cruz, Mike Cruz's son. There you go. Hey, Tyler. Luxembourg Casco, uh, now the lead is 20 to 14. Papermaker's burning a timeout, Ricardo. I think they're talking this one over. It's fourth and short, Whoa. fourth and one, but it's risky. I mean, your defense is playing well. Yeah, but boy. But they got a great interior defensive line. Yeah, your ball's at the 32 yard line. Brian Brick again, great. Thank you for the update. Wrightstown up 27 to 12 over St. Croix Falls. The Tigers looking good. Mm -hmm. They're making me look smart, Brick, because I don't know if uh, folks out in YouTube land know I did pick Wrightstown uh, to make it to the D5 final way back before the uh, postseason started. Hey, Steve Seidel. He says, shout out to the Schultz family and Gresham all watching and cheering for the Makers. Okay. Thanks to the PC crew for another great year of covering high school football. We appreciate it, Steve. And uh, we'll do it uh, throughout the basketball season as well. Take us into March for March Madness. Looking forward to it. Hey, Angel Cover says, Viva Marquette. Yeah. Well, here you go, Ricardo. Okay, they're going for it. Now Ellefson's in. Ellefson's in that quarterback. And he's going to take it, and he's going to get the first down. Well, that's why you bring him in there. Yeah, he got more than enough. But it, you kind of hold in your breath, right, if you're the Kimberly coaching staff and the, and the fans, because look at where the ball is with the, here in the third quarter. Now we have another paper maker down. And this time it's Coronado, number 88. Oh, boy, he's so uh, critical to yeah, that run he game. Is. He's basically having another lineman out there. But, Ricardo, I see Rathcamp back in for the papermakers. Okay. So he's in. So hopefully Coronado is just something that he can uh, shake off. You don't want to see any injuries on either side. We want to see these teams at full strength going at it. Hey, I want to, again, shout out the Kimberly uh, folks, uh, the players. Uh, they were well, well represented on the All-Fox Valley Association team. First team selections again, Ricardo. Senior offensive lineman Nick Plowman, that was unanimous. Senior tight end Abe Coronado, who's down right now. Senior wide receiver Bryson Beath, senior quarterback Carson Pendleton. Uh, senior defensive lineman Sam McGivern, unanimous. He was also the FBA Defensive Lineman of the Year. Junior defensive lineman Sawyer Hanlon. Junior inside linebacker Braden Ellison, who we just saw at quarterback. Mm. Senior outside linebacker Sam Dudick. And uh, senior safety Cody Oberman. Uh, I looked at the uh, greater for the greater Metro. Uh, I, it doesn't look like they released their all conference okay. team yet. Sometimes they take a while to do that until all their teams are done competing. Yeah, I was hoping to not get, a big fan of that. Hoping to get some uh, hilltoppers, but Ricardo he, uh, Coronado can't put any weight on his right leg. Mm. You know, Brett, you mentioned Sam Dudek. Michael Dudek's watching from New York City, saying, "Go Sam Dudek and the Papermakers." Trying to get some of these other ones out here too. Ricardo, this isn't a good scene here. No. Uh, uh, Coronado's in a lot of pain, and uh, this is not good for that Kimberly offense. He is critical in what they want to do and uh, can't put any weight on that right leg at all. Shout out to McGee. Hey, Ben Youngworth, former offensive lineman for Kimberly, says, what's up, Ricardo? Ben, I remember talking to you last year. I believe, was it last year or, or a few years ago? I can't remember. The, the, the years just all, when you get this old, just kind of yeah. all go together. Well, that's too bad about Coronado. Uh, I see Kakana now uh, cut it to 17-14, Wanaki yeah. with the lead. Brian Brick with the update on that. Thank you, Brian. Hand off to Tyson. Ooh, Whew. that was a big hit by uh, number 22 for the Hilltoppers, Mitchell Nigro, junior linebacker, one of the captains. 6'2", 220 pounds. So they're going to take uh, Coronado into the uh, tent here and get him looked at, but that's too bad. Shout out to OBAC. I don't know what... Rickman, who that is, technically. Second down and nine for Kimberly. Pendleton got to get rid of it. Ooh, nice catch by Doucette somehow. And I think uh, there's a, a, a catch for no gain. Yeah, I, I think so, too. Well, another third down for the papermakers. Clock continuing to run in this defensive battle. 7-7 seven, seven. as we look at our Cellcom ETS performance scoreboard. Patrick Grapp, he's like, hey, can I get a birthday shout out for PJ, a seventh grade Kimberly Bulldog? There you go. Football player watching tonight. Hey, PJ. Glad to see you're watching. Happy birthday, my friend. And I hope your dad gets you anything you want. Lots of sugary cakes and, you know. I was thinking more cookies. like a PS5, maybe oh. one of the new Xboxes. 
Pendleton, watch out. He's uh, scrambling, trying to get oh, around. he's got room. He's got room, and oh, good tackle by number five for the Hilltoppers. Nick Womack, the senior defensive back, coming in in the papermakers. We'll have to punt this one away. Yeah, it takes it out to the 43. It's going to be a fourth and fourth, yeah, and, fourth three, and three. Fourth and long three, it seems like. But Womack coming in. I thought Pendleton had a shot at uh, that first down. A nice tackle by Womack. Edgar's up 15 to nothing over Bangor. Wanaki 17-14 over Kakana. Thank you again for that update. 28 nothing Franklin leading uh, Sussex Hamilton, Brett. Hilltoppers uh, burning a timeout, Ricardo. Thanks to uh, Jerry Wanchi saying thanks for the coverage, fellas. Shout out to Decker and Kimberly. Appreciate that. Well, now's the time, Ricardo, for the, the stat of the night, right? Uh, the papermakers, uh, record dating back to the 2013 season, now 134 wins against just seven losses. That's a 950 winning percentage dating back to the 2013 season. Let me say that again, 134 victories and just seven losses. Stretch includes six state titles, seven state championship game appearances, and, of course, the state record 70-game winning streak. Kimberly's title last season, the eighth in program history. That's tied for the second most in state history. And Chad Michaelwitz now in his second season with the Papermakers, now 23-2, and two, doing a good job of uh, maintaining tradition. A line drive punt, and whoa. it's going to skip. Whoa, good, takes a great. I'm not sure what he, whoa, that's risky. Novotny, oh, was that Novotny yeah. uh, picking that up? Or no, that's oh. uh, 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 Murphy Monreal. Woo. That's a risk to be uh, kind Absolutely. of. Absolutely. Flying back on, on a cool night uh, with the ball could be a little slippery. Good punt, takes a great uh, skip on that turf. And a long way to go for the Hilltoppers. Paul Wisniewski saying, can I get a shout out to Julie? You certainly can. Catholic Memorial up 21 to 20 now over Lux Casco. Brett, Rice Lake up over Notre Dame 30 to seven. Really? Notre Dame's losing 30 to 7? That's what it says wow. here. Okay. So I'm, I'm trusting that you guys are all giving me right scores now. I thought Notre Dame uh, was going to come away with uh, that victory and go to Madison. I thought so too. McDevitt, nope, little play. Whoa! Roby Brown somehow Look is able out. to keep it. Watch out, is right. Look at how fast he is. He almost fumbled that ball, but boy, does he have some speed. And not only that, but we mentioned uh, number seven, or I uh, checked at number 14, Peyton Roby Brown. He's just 5'6". So on top of that speed, it's really tough to just kind of get an angle on, on him because he's so low to the ground. Boy, that, uh, that's what, about a 21, 22-yard 22-yard gain. That's a little play there. Is the now a little play. Out. Watch out. His, oh, and Ellison. He's, whoa, oh, what is what's that? that? That's, that's a fumble, that Brett. That is. That's a live ball. And who's going to come up with the live ball? There's a flag on the play. There's all sort of chaos going on here. Now, I don't know what McDevitt's doing. I'm not sure what he was doing there either, but who came out with the football? You're right, Ricardo. That's a, back, that's a backwards pass. Oh, boy. And now the officials. Caitlin Lamer saying McGee wants a shout out for being Kimberly's number one fan. We did do that, Caitlin. So uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Ricardo, who came out of that pile? I did, did not did see. Did the Hilltoppers come out with the football? Rosie, I think, did yeah, they did. That? They yeah. did, okay. Yeah. So it's, what's the, it's, where are we at here? Shouldn't it be second down and uh, about three miles to go? There was a penalty on Kimberly? I, I didn't get what that was. Well, but any, anyway, Braden Ellison was the one who got in the backfield. Well, it's first and forever, Brad. It's no, first. Now it's second down, they're saying. Okay, second down and 32. Yeah. Boy, what was what was going on there? I, I guess I'm now Novotny trying to get something going there. But kind of like you said, what was the quarterback thinking in a situation like that? I don't that? know, but uh, he's, he's, uh, he's regretting that decision. Well, he's lucky that uh, the papermakers just didn't come out of the pile with, with uh, that football. That could have been uh, the play of the game right there, given how these two defenses are playing tonight. Wow. Dave Mertens uh, says, uh, nice work on the stream, guys. Go Makers. Hey to Bowen Vegas, who's streaming too. Water it is the hashtag. Third and 30, Ricardo. I got to think this is going to be a little handoff, right? And Don't do anything silly no. if you're Marquette. I'm That's a little push pass. 
to number 17. I think that's uh, Thad Hoffman who had the touchdown catch earlier. And uh, the Kimberly defense holds again. You got to give Braden Ellison a lot of credit for getting in the backfield on that first down and uh, forcing the, that miscue by McDevitt. And that set the paper makers up quite well. And now Ricardo, not only that, you get off the field, but you flip the field as far as field position. That punt helps, but then uh, that McDevitt play, look at where the paper makers, uh, th uh, Thomas Myers, he's setting up right at midfield for this punt. Schmidt, we've seen, has a great leg, though. Uh, so if you're the paper makers, uh, well, check that. I guess Veith is at the 40. Uh, whoa, oh, whoa high snap! And did... He got it away. Boy, that's short, though. It's a short punt. Got to be careful. You're Kimberly. Get yeah, out of the way. Get away, and that's going to skip. Boy, oh, boy. So a high snap. Credit Schmidt, though, for somehow getting his hands on that because that could have been disastrous. That could have been in the end zone. But a short punt because of it, and the paper makers uh, in business at the Hilltoppers 45-yard line. So there's been a crazy sequence going on here at the end of this third quarter. Yeah, it'll be first down and 10. Where are they marking this? Right at the 45? Right at the 45-yard line. Okay. Case and Quick, what up, Ricardo? How you doing, everybody out there? Former Menasha player, right? Am I thinking of No, yeah. Carson. I think maybe it's a Carson Quick. I, I can't remember. I'm old now, you guys. You got you to help me with this kind of stuff. But, Brett, big opportunity for Kimberly here. Tyson. Slithering his way, got five, six yards, a good run, and a good push by that offensive line. Six-yard gain for Gavin Tyson. 11 carries, 34 yards, and that might be the final play of the third quarter. It is a scoreless third quarter, and here we go. Kind of what we talked about, Ricardo's. Again, we look at our Cellcom ETS performance scoreboard, 7-7 tie going into the fourth quarter. Said it before earlier in the, in the second half. I'm going to say it again. Kimberly is used to games like this. Marquette is not. Will that play True. a role here in these final 12 minutes? Yeah, it's, it's again, we've seen Kimberly in this spot before. That's the thing. So, Well, I mentioned all those uh, blowouts for the Hilltoppers, but you look at Kimberly, a 17-14 win over Bayport in Week 2, 22-21 rally against Fond du Lac in Week 4, 21-zip yeah, uh, Nina in the middle of the season, the loss to Kakana, 14-13, but back-to-back -back tough games in Weeks 9 and in the first round against Apple and North, 14-zip, 10-7. And then last week against Nina, 14 to seven. So certainly uh, that FEA schedule battle tested again versus uh, the Hilltoppers who've just kind of demolished everybody. Marquette came into this game having outscored its opponents 476 to 93. They had eight shutouts. Uh, they had a stretch of four straight shutouts from weeks two through five and another of three straight from weeks seven through nine. So seven of eight games of shutout football as Tyson now wrapped up to start this fourth quarter. I don't think there's any gain on that. Third and four at the 39. Hey, Griffin Weigel saying, what's good, Ricardo? I remember Griffin, I think I think you played for Kimberly, didn't you? I'm trying yeah. to think back. That name sounds familiar. Yep. Catholic Memorial now over, over Casco, 27-20 now, Brett. Mm, that's a good game, too. Any uh, updates on the uh, Sussex-Hamilton Franklin game? Well, last time I heard it was 28 nothing Franklin. Is that right? So yeah. Franklin looking like uh, they'll be in Madison taking on one of these two teams who uh, were tied up seven apiece here in this fourth quarter. Here's a big third down, Ricardo, for the papermakers. Nope, uh, Ellison trying to bulldoze Look his way him. through. Look at him still And he up. does get the first down. Wow. That's why you put him in there. Big, strong kid, right, uh, taking that direct snap at quarterback. He's pumped up. Remember, he threw a touchdown pass yes, last did. week as well. Hey, Brett, Ethan Doucette say, hey, can you give my dad, Bill Doucette, a shout-out? He's a big reason my brothers and I are successful. Got you, got you covered there, Ethan. Uh, Bill, we've get our shout-out, Bill Doucette. We've seen Bill at Clubhouse Live. Yes, we have. And uh, his mother, the Doucette family. Yeah, you have Braden Ellison, 6'3", 195-pound junior, just willing his way to that first down. And he's in at quarterback again. Ellefson, he's going to keep it. Kind of fakes the handoff. And Ellefson now charging. Now keep in mind, he's fresh. He is fresh. Now he's been playing defense, of course, but uh, fresh when it comes to offensively. And now gives uh, the Hilltoppers a little bit of a different wrinkle. And you have to play him honestly because he can throw the football. Didn't you say 
Jim Chad Michael would say he's probably going to be the quarterback next season. Yes. Uh, Ellison. Yes, and he was the JV quarterback. Yeah. So. Hey, Chris Lang saying shout out to old, all the old people from across the nation except for people from Idaho. Chris, you're from Idaho? Hmm. I love the potatoes. <laughs> Second down, Carson Pendleton now back in. And Tyson, who got a little hole there on the left side. <laughs> look, at, fast, look, at, yeah, look at big number 77, Grayson Mitchler trying to block for him there. I mentioned Chad Michaelowitz, 23-2. and two. Uh, I also want to uh, mention Keith Klistinski in his fourth season as Marquette's head coach. Began in 2020, Ricardo was the interim coach. But uh, to my understanding, had been with the program the previous 23 seasons as an assistant. That included uh, as defensive coordinator. He's 26-16 and 16 as the Hilltoppers head coach. I think a long-time track coach uh, for the Hilltoppers as well. Wanakee up 17-14, to 14, end of the third quarter. Brett over there against Kakana. Well, here you go. Two downs, Ricardo, to get four yards. And Ellefson back in at quarterback. Oh, a little stoppage and of play. I think play. now the papermaker is going to burn another timeout. Hey, Wrightstown's up 33-12 to 12 over St. Croix Falls. Thank you, Brian Brick. So... Congrats to uh, Steve Clister, right? Looks like the Tigers heading to Madison. Okay, Chris Lang, now you're just being goofies. He's giving shout-outs to O.J. Simpson, things like that. Easy Come on, quit playing now. with us. Trying to give everyone their shout-outs here. Well, you know what? We're going to have to – enough of the <laughs> shout-outs, we got to watch the game. Yeah, we got to do the game. Sorry, guys. It's a 7-7 <laughs> game in the Division One State semifinals. I'm, try I'm trying to be, you know, like interact with our fans and everything I here know. and everybody watching, but – yeah, you guys are just throwing me too many names here. I can't keep up. Let's watch. I'm just going to have to give you, hey, a little Harry Carey. Everybody gets uh, a shout out. By the way, Abe Coronado. Uh, uh, Is he out there? He's on crutches right now oh here on the boy. sideline. Oh, I see him. Yeah. Rosie, can you get a shot like of him on that? He's uh, got his foot or ankle. Yeah, looks right like wrapped ankle. up on, on ice. That's too bad. Third and four situation at the 27 for Kimberly. 9.15 left here in the fourth quarter. Brett, they can pound this one in. Let nice. that defense go to work. Even a field goal. Yeah. Well, again, two downs to get four yards, and now uh, actually Carson Pendleton coming in after the timeout with Marcus Doucette in the backfield with him and handoff to Doucette, spinning his way. Oh, boy. Nothing How there. How about that tackle by number 21? Murphy Monreal just coming wow. in, the senior defensive back, and a fourth down coming up for the papermakers. No gain on that for Doucette, but man, oh, man. Monreal was right there. Good tackling, too. Pretty good tackling team on both yeah, sides. Yeah. This feels like a, a time where you could put Ellison out there and maybe uh, let him throw one, huh? I like that idea. You know, he's come in, and now Pendleton's going to stay out there, and he's been hot tonight as well. Fourth down. you got to look for Bryson Beath, right? Uh, near side, along with Brendan Grams. Looks like they'll be lining up. Don't forget about number 93 on the other side. We've seen him as well, Connor Baruchak, listed as a fullback, but he's made some plays too in the passing game. Oh. And now we're going to get a penalty. What's oh, it's this a delay on? a game, or did they call a timeout? Yeah, it was. It was. Whoa, that was close. That's the third time. That's the third and final timeout now for the papermakers. So no timeouts remaining for Kimberly with 8:24 to play in this game. Hey, shout out to Nick Eckes. Brady Eckes is uh, giving that shout out. I'm not doing John Wilkes Booth, Seth Connor. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> These kids are crazy, Brett. They keep me young. Now, fear the deer. I don't. Is this is this correct? See, now I'm getting conflicting reports over Catholic Memorial and Lux Casco. One says they're up. Another says they're not up. Now I gotta look. You guys are killing me. Don't be doing this to me. You gotta give me the right stuff. Deb Sieber says, "Thanks for the broadcast." That's an email. We are enjoying the game in Siesta Key, Florida. Thank you. I Deb. love Siesta Key. The beach out there is beautiful. And thank you, Michael. Uh, ugh. Well, I'll, I'm not sure how to say your last name. P L O E D E R L. Give me a Franklin. Franklin beating Hamilton 28 zip. Thank yeah. you. So here you go. Going downfield. Got him. Oh, oh, knocked oh, away. Oh. Gavin Tyson, the intended receiver. And it was knocked away. It was almost there. Good defensive stop by the Hilltoppers. They're celebrating because, again, and the paper makers were on the move but just couldn't uh, finish it off. And now it's time for the Hilltoppers offense to see if they can do anything against this Kimberly defense. Michael's saying, hey, Ricardo, shout out to all the veterans this weekend. Happy Veterans Day. 
Yes, I have a lot absolutely. of veterans in my family. Yes. A lot of Navy. Absolutely. Navy officers, that kind of stuff. No doubt about it. Thank you to all the veterans for your service. No doubt about that. McDevitt now is going, oh, he's going, going deep. deep downfield. That's going to be too far. You could see that right away. Yeah. He threw the double coverage. Cam Russell, the receiver, but he looked long from the get-go, although <laughs> Russell had some pretty good closing speed right at the end. But uh, I like that. Take a shot. Second and ten coming up. Oh, my heart's beating a little bit here. What a game here in the state semifinal. McDevitt waiting again. Novotny next to him. He claps his hands. Now he's going to roll right. Got him. It, and that's going to be uh, out of bounds, but third and manageable. And so toss to Thad Hoffman, the senior wideout. Hoffman had a 32-yard uh, touchdown catch in the second quarter from McDevitt. Third and short. Yeah. Well, third and actually four. Well, I'll tell you what, if you want you want your big guys to get through, if you're handling, if you're McGivern, got to create some pressure. Five wideouts for Marquette. Yeah, Brett. spreading it out. McDevitt, whoa, oh. that's going to be a false start. Yep. Movement on the uh, yep, offense. You could see, I don't know what happened there, if there was some miscommunication, but McDevitt really kind of a demonstrative clap of his hands and uh, got, to, I think it was at the right guard, maybe to flinch. And that is going to be a false start on the Hilltoppers. Third and nine, uh, a little bit more difficult, Ricardo, than third and four. So that's a big penalty. It is Luxembourg Casco up over Catholic Memorial 2014. Okay. Third and nine from the 28 for Marquette. Big play, Brett. And McDevitt. Not getting pressured. And uh, there's guess who, oh. guess who, and he got it. Guess who. 14. Peyton Roby Brown again. Boy, he's kind of that escape, that, that uh, safety valve, that safety blanket for this uh, Hilltoppers offense. Kind of gets lost in traffic. Again, 5-6. McDevitt finds him for a huge first down on third and nine. This time swinging it over to the left side. And a uh, good job by number four, Cam Russell, to evade the tackle. Although uh, Benny Kiefer doing a good job to kind of slow that down a little bit. But what about a six, seven-yard pickup? Seven-yard pickup, I'll call it. SC Lee says, great game, great team coverage. Enjoying it in South Texas. Ina Rocket fan pulling for the Makers. And Novotny got the first down now. The Hilltoppers on the move, Ricardo, with yes. seven and a half to go. Five-yard gain for Novotny. He's been kind of quiet all day. 15 carries, 47 yards. Marquette on the move, Brett, with 7.30 left in the fourth quarter. Novotny, Novotny. whoa, Ellison there holding on, and Novotny dropped. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. I think it's going to be a one-yard loss, second and so 11. Too. Second and 11. Oh, look at this. A little razzle-dazzle. Nope. Novot or McDevitt has it. And he's going to be a yard shy. Nice little play call, though, Ricardo. Mm -hmm. Little misdirection, kind of getting the defense fooled. Kind of pulling out all the stops now, right? Uh, with uh, about uh, 640 clock continuing to run. And this game tied. Third and one coming up. Is this four down Ooh. territory? Yeah, here? 10 yard gain. It's got to be four down territory the way your defense is playing. McDevitt, handoff to Novotny. Novotny is... Oh, I don't think no, he got it. I think he's short by about a half yard. He tried to get that initial uh, lunge, but no, the Kimberly defense holds. And you got fourth down. Fourth and one officially. They're going to say... Uh, ball's going to be uh, just past the 39. They need to get to the 38-yard line. Here you go, fourth down. And a big moment in this game is McDevitt waiting for it, claps his hands, Novotny, 
And Novotny. Oh, I don't know if he got. Oh, oh I think the initial lunge. Oh, Let's I don't know. see where they mark short. this ball. I think the sideline official here on the Kimberly side is he's got it at the 38. And they got the first down. Boy, Ricardo Novotny, he is a strong runner. 5'9", yeah. 169-pound uh, sophomore. It looked like he was short, but just a little bit of a, a lunge. He just kept those legs churning and just enough to keep this drive going. Hey, Matt Jack is he's saying, hey, shout out to Luke Mueller. Go Hilltoppers. First and 10 at the 38 for Marquette. Play fake to Novotny. He's got a guy in the wheel route. Yeah, well, what knocked away, and it's almost caught on the deflection. They're calling a penalty, though, Brett. Oh, it's going to be pass interference. Yep, and it was the official trailing mm. who made the call, unless they're going to talk about this. But I think it's going to be a penalty on Kimberly. Be a big penalty on the papermaker's defense as we uh, waiting around for the call here. It is pass interference. That's a first down too, and ball will be at the 25 yard. No, tw where are they marking this? 20, 24. 23, 23 yard line. Oh yeah, it is a 23. Oof. That's 15 yards though. Hilltoppers in business now with this game tied at seven apiece. Where did this drive start? Way back at the 23, Brett. Yeah, beautiful, nice methodical drive by the Hilltoppers. Clap of the hands of McDevitt. Novotny oh, squeezes no. through. Watch out, Novotny on the run. And he's going to score from 23 yards out. 23-yard touchdown run by Novotny. And the Hilltoppers are in front. Brett, you saw that. You saw Novotny kind of create his own lane, really showing good patience, good awareness, able to kind of weave through some traffic and get that touchdown, Brett. Incredible drive for Marquette. Oh, I guess. They got the stop, right? Turnover on downs, and they uh, went right down the field. Yeah, Brett, 10 play, 77-yard drive. Novotny, 23-yard touchdown run for Marquette, pending the extra point. Eric Schmidt on for the P18. He's got a great leg. High snap again, and that kick, boy, he just rocketed that one through the goal post. So as we look at our uh, CELCOM and ETS performance scoreboard, the 23-yard touchdown run by Tommy Novotny puts Marquette on top 14-7 to with 5.18 to play in this game. Got to update my Twitter. You can follow me at Ricardo DeLeon, D-E-L-I-A-N, Brett at PC Brett C, Rosie at Metal Rosie. Well, if you're the papermakers, Ricardo, uh, now is where you gotta you got to pull everything out, right? Uh, it's a tough task going against that defense. But 5.18 to play. Keep in mind, Kimberly with no timeouts remaining as well. Plenty of time, though, 5.18. That, that should be enough time. I have to think Schmidt is going to just uh, kick this one into the end zone and force the papermakers to go 80 yards. Wanakee up 24-14 with 5.43 to play, says Mike Sherry. Look at that kick. Boy, what a leg. I wonder if he's going to kick somewhere at the next level. Edgar's up 21. Oh, that's a final. Edgar 21, Bangor 3. So here we go, Kimberly. Everything rests on this drive for the papermakers. No timeouts, 5.18 left. Ball will be at the 20. We'll see what the papermakers can do. Brett, they've been in this situation before. I don't know if they've been against, uh, well, I guess Appleton North's defense yeah. qualifies as, a, as good as Marquette here. Pendleton looking to his left, fires over to uh, Bryson Veith, and that's a first down. Toss to V. Ball will be at the 31 32 yard line. I almost wonder if you want to play some tempo against this Hilltoppers defense, right? I know that's not what the papermakers like to do. 
Yeah, the uh, I should say that Pendleton's 13 for 19 for 130 yards, Brett. First down and 10 at the 32. Now he's going to look to his right, throws to nice Graham, catch by Grams. Grams. And that's about uh, six or seven yards there. Ball at the 38, so I think that's a, what, a six yard toss. Second and four coming up. Wrightstown again, 33 to 12. Brett, they're moving on. They are. They're taking their three yards and a cloud of dust offense down to Madison. Tyson with the carry, and he spins his way, and that's another first down. Fourteen carries, 41 yards for Gavin Tyson, but Brett, the nice start for Kimberly on this drive. I mean, nearing the four-minute mark here, they... They have plenty of time. I mean, this is, this, this is one of those drives where everything has to be executed, though. We got a tweet from our friend John Casper, Jr. He's saying, go Hilltopper, shout out to my fellow Marquette University high school grads. You know, John's watching this in Winona. Going deep downfield. Oh, look out. Oh, that's short. Oh, he comes back almost. Kind of got hung up in the air there. Yeah, uh, uh, Cullen, uh, number nine. Aaron Cullen, I thought maybe had a chance to get to come back to the ball. Chris Lang is saying, hey, Ricardo, your ex-profile says you're a Bears fan. What? Yeah, it's called being born in Chicago. <laughs> Actually, he's wearing a Chicago Bears hat here in That's the press right. box. That's right. The Bank of Sun Prairie Stadium press box. Ricardo, you don't want to leave here. I love this press box. You're just gonna, you, I this think is my favorite stadium to be in. I'm telling you right now. You want to you live here. Well, I don't know about live here. I like the Appleton area. No, I mean, you want to live in this press box. Oh, yeah, m I, maybe. To get a mattress or something in here. <laughs> Second down and 10 at the 42. Hand off to Tyson right up the gut. Ooh, nice, nice gain for Gavin Tyson. Yeah, hard tackle by Murphy Monreal. And uh, you got to kind of get to the line of scrimmage quickly. That's what the paper makers, yeah, they're going to talk things over on the sideline. Remember, no timeouts No again. timeouts. And Pendleton running back, third and five. Two downs to pick up five yards. What do you do here? This is where you... You wish you had an Abe Coronado, right? Abe Coronado going out with that uh, right foot injury, it looks like. He was on crutches. The second half is Pendleton now waiting for it. He's going to hand it off to Tyson, who sneaks. Oh, wow. sneaks through. Oh. Somehow gets the first down. Breaking tackles. Clock stops to reset the chain. Ball at the Marquette 45. Showing good vision. Did Gavin Tyson on that. And this drive started at the 20, Brett. They're already at the 45 of Marquette. Pendleton comes in with the play. Under three minutes to play. Clock continuing to run. As Pendleton waiting for it. Another handoff to Tyson trying to get around. Nothing. Well, he made a little bit of something. And now you got to get to that line of scrimmage and move quickly, Ricardo. I mean, there's, again, no timeouts. You're just going to have to uh, get everybody up to the line and snap this ball. You can't waste too much time. Right. Now it's 2.30. Well, you can kind of hear the Kimberly fans in front of us getting a little anxious, right? Probably going to have to uh, take a shot play here soon. Pendleton looking to his left. Fake to Tyson. Watch out. He's going to have to get rid of it. Throws downfield, and there was just great pressure. I think he looked like number 32 maybe. Somebody wants a hold. Uh, Bryce Roeder maybe, the senior linebacker. Somebody is thinking they got held, but uh, third down coming up. Third and eight. Yeah, third and eight still here for the Makers. Obviously four down territory, but your Kimberly, kind of crunch time here. Marquette, again, they're playing well for being in such a tight game, Brett. Yeah, they really are. They really are. It's not phasing them one bit uh, going against uh, this Kimberly juggernaut as well as Pendleton now going to throw to Cullen, who stays somehow stays in bounds. So fourth down, boy, did he take a hit. Boy, how, how about number five? 
Nick Womack, the defensive back, just flying into the picture. So fourth down and five coming up. And clock continuing to run. And you can hear the hilt. This is it right now. This is the play. This is the play. Game on the line. Season on the line for the paper makers. Can they convert this fourth down? Watch out. Pendleton's got to get rid of it. Throws down field, and it's incomplete. And the Hilltoppers, they're going to win this game. Look at the celebration across from us. They are going bananas on that Hilltoppers sideline. Brett, yeah, and Pendleton was being pressured uh, from behind. I don't think that – it may have rushed the throw. I, I, you don't know for sure, but the pass was just a little off towards the sideline. But great. Marquette's defense holds. Mm, they hold again, and with no timeouts, Ricardo, that's ball game. Hilltoppers just need to line up in victory formation, and it looks like uh, it's going to be Marquette and Franklin in the Division I state championship game next Friday at Camp Randall Stadium, 4 o'clock kickoff. What a game. Well, here well, we in the thought state semifinal. It Just was a what battle. we thought it was, yeah. Absolute battle between these two uh, great programs and two great defenses. Marquette, well, we'll talk about it in a second, but boy, what a, what a drive previously to pull ahead and, as it turns out, the game-winning score. Yeah, and Kimberly had his chances, Brett. Fourth quarter, mm -hmm. two drives. One ended at the 27 of Marquette. This one ended at the 40. So the papermakers did have two shots at tying or the game or going ahead, actually. Tough way for the papermakers to end their season. Yes, absolutely. And and Kakana down, what, 10 is last check as well? So might be a rough night overall for the Fox Valley Association. Greater Metro, though, looks like they'll get one team through. They will with the Hilltoppers. And, uh, and Franklin advanced and Southeastern Conference will pop through. Papermakers can't stop the clock. Nope. Well, your thoughts? I mean, first, uh, not only this game, but the, the, this Kimberly season, right? Uh, again, getting to the state semifinal round, Ricardo, nothing to uh, hang your heads about. No. Uh, what a season, again, for Chad Michaelwitz and the Papermakers. They're always a mainstay at this uh, stage of the season. Yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, this is always a, a thing for Kimberly. The bar set so high for them. Making it to the semifinals, that's kind of expected in, in some ways. Almost unfairly expected. It's unfairly expected, but that's where the program's bar is. And uh, nice season for the papermakers, Brett. Michael Witz, of course, they won the state title last year. And uh, they won't get to defend their state title, though, at Camp Rando as Marquette is going to knock off the papermakers here, 14-7. to yeah, 7. And your thoughts on Marquette? I mean, that defense I, yeah. is uh, good as advertised, isn't it? Right, and it's kind of tough to say because, you know, Franklin looks really, really good. Yeah, they good. do. If they took care of Sussex-Hamilton. And Sussex-Hamilton's darn good. Marquette's going to have to play defense the way they play tonight, Brett. They got a shot. In D1, who knows what happens here, but uh, congratulations to the Hilltoppers yeah. making it back for the first time since 09. Is that what you said? I think they won the title in 09. Yeah, I, th I believe okay. so. And then they had made – couple state semifinals runs and, and of course uh, first victory coming up against the papermakers uh, all three previous games won by Kimberly in the playoffs including right. two state semifinal appearances so congratulations to the Hilltoppers and uh, they're moving on they're going to take on Franklin next week Friday in the division one state championship game again kickoff at 4 p.m. and the papermakers congratulations to them another fantastic season not quite uh, how they wanted it to end but 10 and 2 in the uh, Another trip to the state semifinals. So, Ricardo, I know you got to get down to the oh field. Yeah. Again, look for your coverage uh, tomorrow, right, to get some uh, recap. That's true. And uh, look, ev everyone else, too, for, like, Kakana, we're going to have Wrightstown wrap-up and the Kakana wrap-up. So, yeah, check us all out there. Uh, tomorrow, in, tomorrow in the morning it should be posted on postcrescent.com. Last check, too, what Kakana was down 10, so it wasn't yeah. looking good for them either. Wrightstown advanced, though, so we know that already. So congratulations to Marquette. Congra congratulations yeah. for to Kimberly. I think Marquette. Franklin, that's going to be a heck of a D1 final. It's going to be a fun D1 final to watch for sure. and It's been a fun season here. We appreciate everybody yes. watching. I, I think we finished the season uh, over 200,000 views on our high school football streams this season. We did 13 weeks, 15 games. Remember, we did two uh, games in the first two weeks of the season. Guys, 200,000 views is uh, crazy good. So we appreciate you guys all checking in and, and hanging out with us. and. Uh, we'll do it again come basketball season, and that's 
coming around here, whether you like it or not, Ricardo, <laughs> soon enough. Yeah, we thank everyone for tuning in and being active. And uh, I think I did I, I think I did more shout outs tonight than I have in my entire live streaming experience, Brett. Yeah, and uh, thanks, thanks to Brent too. He said thanks to you and me for and Rosie for the for the game. Marquette deserves the win. Felt like they yeah. just controlled the maker offense all game. Tough way to finish the season. Hats off to both teams. Well said. Good stuff here. So everyone, uh, happy holidays. I guess we won't see each other uh, well, in terms of the family. Extended USA Today Network well, Wisconsin we, we group. Might, we might do a, a basketball game right before Thanksgiving. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. That's true. If uh, if so, if that's the case, well, till next time on the hardwood, right? There you go. All right, everyone, have a good night. Uh, from me, I'm going to get down there on the field. Yep, sounds good, Ricardo. And I'm going to run down the scoring here and, and, and sign off for the final time this football season. Uh, Marquette got on the scoreboard first, 10-22 to play in the second quarter, a 32-yard pass from uh, Peter McDevitt to number 17, Thad Hoffman, made it 7-0. That came off of a Kimberly fumble. Papermakers answered on the ensuing drive, 33-yard pass from Caden Pendle or Carson Pendleton, I should say, to uh, Bryson Veith. Capped an eight-play, 80-yard drive, three plays of 10 yards or more in that drive. And that's how we were uh, set up, 7-7 at the half. Actually, 7-7 going into the fourth quarter, well into the fourth quarter, until Marquette finally uh, scored what proved to be the game-winning touchdown, a 23-yard run by Tommy Novotny. Capped a 10-play, 77-yard drive. Kick was good. That actually came after uh, Marquette held Kimberly and forced the turnover on downs. 14-7 was the score then, and that's uh, how the game ends as you look at our CELCOM and ETS performance scoreboard. Again, with the victory, uh, the Hilltoppers, uh, they're 11-2. and two. They'll take on Franklin next Friday, 4 o'clock, in the Division I State Championship game just down the road at Camp Randall Stadium in Madison. Kimberly uh, fall or finishes its season 10-2, uh, and co-champs of the Fox Valley Association. As for us, again, uh, we're switching gears, right? We will uh, start uh, our uh, focus on boys and girls basketball. Looking forward to that. Uh, I'll announce my matchups, uh, <coughs> those matchups, I should say, on my Twitter account at PC Bretzy, so please give me a follow. And again, uh, remember, you can access our previous Game of the Week live streams on our USA Today Network Wisconsin websites. Just go to the sports section and scroll down, <coughs> excuse me, until you see the Watch Our Varsity Game of the Week prep live streams link. Again, thanks to our sponsors, Cellcom, ETS Performance, and Cooney's Embroidery and Sportswear. Black Friday sales this month at Cellcom, now through November 20th. Join today and save up to $600 on phones from top brands. Visit cellcom.com slash deals for details. ETS Performance is the leading provider of sports performance training for athletes across the Midwest and Northeast Wisconsin. Visit etsperformance.com to schedule your free athlete evaluation today at the ETS location nearest you. And Cooney's, they have the skill, skills and experience to customize your apparel and spread the word about your organization. Contact them today at 920-731-0922 or send them an email at Cooney's, C-O-O-N-E-Y-S-0922 at SBC, sbcglobal.net. So for Rosie, for Ricardo, and the entire crew with USA Today Network Wisconsin, this is Breck Christopherson signing off from Bank of Sun Prairie Stadium at Ashley Field here in Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. Once again, the final score tonight. It was a WIAA Division I state semifinal thriller. Marquette pulls off the victory over Kimberly 14-7. Thanks for watching, everybody.